trying to figure out bad news guys I just got can we do a different background color since we're in a blue shirt I don't mm. and I'm drinking a blue drink nobody can see me fine what about purple 
Purple. Oh. Purple? Green? I mean, we're having a good day. Green is good. green. Let's do it. Let's do it. Green. Okay. That's the show prep you guys miss out on. Guys, <laughs> welcome to Big Boy Crypto, home of the Guard, the largest and greatest crypto community in all of the interwebs. No channel works harder to keep you in the know about crypto. Uh, someone says, Richard Hart, wanna be boy? What? Excuse me. Excuse me. I do not have a Burberry bonnet. Do not have a Burberry bonnet. <laughs> Yet. Yet. Yeah. It's on the way. We love Burberry. We love bonnets. Um, I can't believe it's not butter. Okay, so, um, what am I talking about? Uh, my name is Bill. We come to you live every single day, 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Didn't even, big announcement, didn't even need anybody to do the intro for me. I was here on time. I was ready, though. You were Tim, ready. Tim Boy Crypto is always ready. I call him Tiny Tim Crypto. Tiny Tim Crypto. Tiny yeah. Tim Crypto. Yeah. yeah, Tiny Tim Crypto. Um, so guys, the purple look better. People are asking for the purple. Oh no, it's because it's saying salon, a royalty. Let's go back to purple. They think I'm the king. They tell me I'm the mm. king. Look at that, guys. I'm the king. Here we are. Guys, don't forget to smash that like button. Number one thing you can do as a member of the Bit Squad. If you're in Bit Nation, make sure to smash it. Look at that. Do we put different shirts on this guy all the time? That's smart. I just noticed that today. What about on my monkey? Does he get a different shirt? Yeah, again, if you change if you change the color of the shirt, we're like Madonna. Yeah, because you know, do you know about Madonna about her her board ape? Do you not I know about? Did it? not know. Do she you know about one. it, Drew? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. First of all, what is this doing up here, mm. Johnny? Well, the cat. Johnny. Out of the office, Johnny. So. Hide your trash. Hide your trash. Johnny, uh, come up here uh, and get your trash. Unbelievable. Get your trash, Johnny. Th thank you, Johnny. Thank you. <laughs> God. <laughs> Monkeys. Okay. Mice. No good. We, well, see, we, we definitely should have put a poll up. How many of you guys, when you use a computer, prefer the trackpad using it's not a reliable or a it, mouse? It's not a reliable poll because a lot of people are dumb. Mm. That trackpad is far superior. When you understand how to use this like a pro, you cannot do better. You cannot do better. Oh, well, here <laughs> You can't do better than a trackpad when you know how to use it. And when you don't know how to use it, when you're low IQ... You like a you like a mouse. Listen, I get it. Technical analysis is borderline impossible using a trackpad. Absolutely not. High level. High level technical. Absolutely. Kelly, what not. are your thoughts? Trackpad, mouse, TA. Mouse only. That's. I'm listen. telling you, these people are monsters. They're monsters. They're monsters. Mm. That's why I call them Tiny Tim, and that's why. Well, Kelly's over there. I don't even call Kelly anything because he's just <laughs> Kelly. Like I don't even you know he's irrelevant to me at this point. No, we love Kelly. He's coming on the show later, so. I gotta be nice to him. <laughs> hey, um, wait, wait, what's the what's the poll? Everybody say mouse, right? Click it. Yeah, yeah. eighty-three. Guys, it's because you're just not experts with a trackpad. When you understand the the expertise of the trackpad, you will you will definitely move over um, to it. Now, what were we talking about, bro? Try playing counter. Okay, gaming. I get. I understand gaming. I understand gaming. I will give you that. Um, what were we talking about? I lost my train of thought. Madonna. Well, you, Madonna. I mean, yeah, Madonna. 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 Yeah. Thank you. We love talking about Madonna. Madonna board eight. This is so stupid what she did. It's so unbelievably dumb. Okay, so, um, you remember that NFT video? That metaverse oh, video. Oh, I do remember that. Not flashbacks. Let's not show that. Okay. That was terrifying. Yeah. Okay, here it was. Wait, th this is it. I think. I think that's it. Let me click images. Hmm. It's this one. Here it is. Okay, so here is the actual, the, I think this is the actual ape right here, okay? Do you, do you guys see it? This is the actual ape. Now, yeah. You can't really see it. Oh, here we go. You see, you see it right here. Now, notice a couple of things about it. Cigarette and background. She changed it. <laughs> she literally changed her NFT. <laughs> she got rid of the cigarette because it promotes smoking. Okay. And she changed the background. And this is what she put out. Madonna. It's just a scared monkey now. Madonna, that's not your NFT. Mm. That's not your NFT. That's not it. You can't change the characteristics of your NFT and it still be the original NFT. Now, mm. you can brand it and then you could do stuff with the brand, with the branding of your monkey. Mm -hmm. But that's not your NFT. I'm sorry, Madonna. I guess when it comes to these NFTs, she's like a virgin. What can I say? Don't cry for me. Don't cry for me. Okay. <laughs> I can. You know she needs help. Madonna? She needs help. She needs help. Madonna. Madonna needs help. You know, she needs help. 
we got to say a little prayer. A little yeah. prayer. A little prayer for Madonna. It's another Madonna song. Uh, I don't know that much about Madonna. Well, it's because you're not, it's because you're not like into like worldly Weirdos. things. You're not into worldly things. It's true. You're yeah. not a material girl, Tim. I'm not. Ooh. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Boom. That was a good one. You got to admit, awesome. that was good. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Where do I come up with this stuff? I don't know. I guess I just, it's because I'm fashionable. I'm in vogue. Okay. Mm. All right. You just can't stop. <laughs> Guys, I'm a secret. I'm a closet Madonna fan. I'm a closet Madonna fan. Like, I'm not going to rock Madonna on the radio when I'm driving around in the Lambo, but only because I'd be embarrassed. That's why. I, I do love Madonna. I'll tell you this. My favorite halftime show of all time, next to, obviously, the number one of all time, nothing touches it. Anybody know what it is? Uh, no. More, Dr. Dre, Snoop, and Eminem. Okay, okay. I, that, yeah. That a lot of people like Prince. One. A lot of people like Prince. The Prince one goes out there, too, but, like, I'm... I was yeah, Prince, oh my, like I, you know, purple rain, purple rain, purple rain. Hmm. As I could have been a singer. Yeah. This purple inspired me. A lot of people like the Prince one, but my favorite halftime show ever was the Madonna one. I really loved the Madonna one. Actually, I really did like it. It was great. Um, the Who? I don't know about the Who. Um, I don't know about the who. Let's see what other people are. don't cry from me, Argentina. Yeah, I really like that one. That wardrobe malfunction one was fun. Oh, the JT and uh yeah. Janet. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yep. Was that planned? It was planned, obviously. Obviously, it was planned. She yeah. had a, a a thing on. Yeah. Obviously, it was planned. It was intense though. Oh, hey, my wife is here. Hey, hon. Hmm. Hmm. Hun, Rhea is here. That's Rhea. Rhea's here. <laughs> I just made an introduction from behind the camera, in front of the camera. It was amazing. Okay. All right, so, uh, guys, let's get going on the show. Should we do the show today? We should do some form of a show. But today. before we do the show, <laughs> <laughs> if that buzzer ever stops working, I need one from my desk, too. Can we get a new one? Probably. Where's my guy who made that one? A lot of people like Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars one was okay. Pregnant Rihanna. Duh. Not because she was pregnant, but I'm just not a Rihanna fan. I don't, I've never really been in love with Rihanna. I don't know why people are so... It's a strange show. Yeah. People like Snoop Cat. Snoop Cat. Snoop Cat? You do halftime show after 9-11? What was that? Was it Bruce Springsteen probably or something? I don't remember Who that did one. it after? I'll look it up. The Shakira. The Shakira one was pretty good. I like Shakira. I think the worst one was probably where they had Britney Spears, just uh, NSYNC... I think Aerosmith may have been involved in there. They had like Nelly was there. They had like too much. It was too much one year. Looks like U2 did the one after 9 11. U2. Okay. Yep. U2. Well, I don't like U2. No. Okay. Uh, I've been in a few Super Bowls. So I saw the Snoop one. I was there for that one. And then um, how many Super Bowls have I been to? Two? Or no, I've been to three because I went to the, the one I forgot about Falcon Super Bowl. Lady Gaga was a halftime show of that. Um, so, mm, that's a great question, TC. That's a great question. I don't know what to do about that. I don't know what to do about that. Frankfurt. Well, I think we were going to go to Berlin and say, we need to talk about this today. We're going to talk about all this today. Okay. We have people asking. People are wanting me to come to Germany. Mm. Finally, The Rock has come back to Germany. Um, uh, the other one I saw was um, The Weekend. The weekend, which the halftime show, the weekend halftime show was meh. Yeah, so really the like real that. life concert of the weekend was awesome. Huh. So there we go. Yeah. When Winnipeg, uh, God, you want to do this, Winnipeg? Winnipeg, you want to do this? Winnipeg, you you want to do this right now? Uh, look, Winnipeg, uh, people in Winnipeg are great. Love Winnipeg people. Love love people from Winnipeg. So great. Y'all stole our freaking hockey team. I'm sorry, I'm not coming. Y'all stole our hockey team. And what have you done with it? What have you done with it, Winnipeg? Yeah. Y'all got Winnipeg. We got Winnipeg here. That's oh. how it felt. He took our team. The Atlanta team moved to Winnipeg? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Several years ago. You know what killed our, our hockey team was uh, Danny Heatley. Danny Heatley was on the cover of NHL like 2000, whatever year it was. It's supposed to be the greatest hockey, the next Wayne Gretzky. And he came here and he, uh, he came here in Atlanta. He was a rookie, I think, or a second year maybe. And he was, was drunk driving, I believe it was a Ferrari and crashed. 
and killed the guy in the passenger seat, which was another guy on the hockey team. And then we had to ship him out of here. So mm -hmm. that was the beginning of the downfall of Atlanta. Very sad story. Um, and the, now we had the Flames earlier in the 70s. I wouldn't lie for that. I don't know. But we love the Thrashers. Thrashers were great. But we miss them. Kovalchuk, you stole him from us. Saints, Falcons meet up in New Orleans. We'll see. I, I like going to New Orleans. So here's here we made this incredible video. Incredible video. Where is it? Here it is. Well, let's go to the um, let's go to videos here. Behind closed vaults, the predatory nature of banks. This is one of the best videos that we've made. This is an incredible video. Mm -hmm. If you want to know about the banking industry and how it actually operates and where we're heading and what's terrifying about where we're heading, please go and watch this video. This is the worst performing video we've ever had. It's just because there's not XRP or Bitcoin or crypto in that first part of the title. We should have tied it in. We should have mentioned XRP in the video. Yeah, we might XRP. change the title on it. But. We're going to change the title. And the thumbnail, the thumb's a little... Yeah, we're gonna, I think we're getting a yeah. fresh update on both those. Because this is one of the best videos we made. And if you've missed this video, it's on you. Uh, very sad. Um, thank you, Lee. Lee apologized. He said, he, you know, sorry they stole that from mm -hmm. us. So thank you, Lee. It means a lot to me. But this is an incredible video. You guys should go watch this video for 100%. So, yeah. And don't forget, guys, of course, on our homepage, we've got all of our other channels. Frankie Candles, Bit Lab Academy, Around the Blockchain, Blockchain Basement, Forever Frenemies, All Men Sports, FT Alpha, and Hit Outwork. You guys make sure to go follow all of that stuff because it's all good stuff. Um, don't forget to check out hitmerch.com where you can get some of these sexy Ben shirts. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, there's no such thing as, as a, an unsexy Ben. Ooh. Only sexy Ben and shirts. Sexy mm. Ben shirts. Mm. Um, they look great on you, I'm sure. I look great on you. Oh, God. Drew, I would look great on you too. I highly doubt that. I would hang on to you like a monkey. Would you? Yeah, like 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 a struggle snuggle or something. A struggle snuggle. Okay. I don't know what a struggle snuggle is, but I'm into it. All right. What is it? I'm into it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Look at the markets here, and Kelly's gonna be coming on here in a few minutes. Okay. Wow, we got through intro pretty fast today. Yeah. Eleven minutes of nonsense, and now here we are at the show. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. One point eight million cryptos. What? <sighs> is this real? I gotta talk to Coin Market Cap. I gotta talk to Coin Market. Oh, that's good, Johnny. Is there really 1.8 million? Yeah, let me tell you what project? they did. What? The vertical mouse, Mary. I've tried. I've I've touched one of those, and it terrifies me. I I this has helped my um uh tendonitis. The trackpad is just very. Shh. Look at how I rub this trackpad. Mm. Look at how I rub it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the way I rub this trackpad. The trackpad loves it. It asked me for more even. Just you charge you. the trackpad. Oh, when I touch it, it gets electric. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> okay, so come back. I talked to Coin Market Cap. Okay. Okay. Does AJ have a black eye? Why is he wearing glasses? He always does that. Are oh, you going to get lunch? Are they? Are they really Burberry? Here's the bonnet. You got these for real? Where did you get them from? Oh, I have some. I have I have this style, but in black. Mine, mine are black, and then the Burberry is in the pattern colors. With red, with I mean, red's in the pattern color. AJ, here's a question. Bro. Match. Here's yeah. a question, bro. <laughs> bro, are you stealing from me? How do you have enough money for a Burberry glasses, bro? I've been trading. He's been trading, trade. guys. This guy's been trading. He's been trading. Hey, you go from your from the chat working at BitBoy Crypto. You too can wear some Burberry glasses. Mm. These are nice, bro. I like those. I like those. I have a lot of blue Burberry like stuff, man. CSI Atlanta. No, I like the blue. Burberry's got a lot of cool blue stuff. I have a lot of blue Burberry stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I hooked you up with the Balenciagas. You're yeah, saying that like that's a good thing? Yeah, it's not. You need to burn that. that okay, let's poorly. move on. That ended very poorly. And then, and then Balenciaga sued us. <laughs> yeah. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Yeah. Why would y'all want to go to Berlin? It's the equivalent of San Francisco and travel to Frankfurt is much easier. Ah. Okay. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to look into it. We have to talk about that today, by the way, after the show. Okay. Um, okay. So what happened is coin market cap decided at some point they have like 2,500 coins listed. And the whole thing was like, Oh, Hey, you know, like to get on coin market cap, you got to have certain requirements. Like you got to message them. You got to tell them you got this, that blah, 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 blah. Well, now they just, I, I think what this is, 
is a literally just list the total amount of cryptocurrencies that have ever been created. That's how we went from 2,500 or 25,000. Yeah, 25,000 yeah. all the way to 1.8 million overnight, and then it hasn't moved. You know what, Kelly? I, I love CoinGecko. I think CoinGecko is really freaking good. Um, how, but see, the, the rankings only go to like, the rankings only go to 10,000. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Did you show that again? 97.54, that's how the rankings go. There's only 9,754 ranked. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. And this is on coin market, coin, coin market Kelly says, why don't you use CoinGecko? Well, I like CoinGecko. I prefer CoinGecko for a lot of things, actually. For, it's better for research. However, this is just, it, this is the, this is the Amazon of crypto research. You know, this is the, the Facebook of crypto research. And I'm so used to the numbers and the way they track the volume. If I go to CoinGecko, I've got to go, or if I go to CoinGecko, I've got to go back to CoinMarketCap to look and compare it because the numbers are different. Look, we got, um, we have the, Total market cap at 1.18 trillion. You go to CoinGecko, yeah. and it's at 1.216 trillion. Yeah, the numbers are very different. The numbers are different. Now, the reason why the numbers are different is because I believe CoinGecko tracks all the projects. Coin market cap, I think only the top 200 go into that ranking. I believe so. I think that's right. Yeah. But because of that, it's like I just know the coin market cap numbers so well, and I always feel like when I use CoinGecko, I got to go back and check those to see where that. Because look at the dominance numbers: 47.1 Compared to maybe forty five, forty eight point nine percent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gecko is forty lowest low. Yeah, forty eight point nine percent. So because of that, because they have more coins, they're taking yep. more coins in consideration. Yep. Like I just coin market cap is just what we're always going to use until we have our own. We will get our own. We are working on that right now. But um, you know, no spoilers. Uh, e dominance down eighteen point nine percent. Bitcoin dominance up a little bit. The volume is at thirty three point three six billion. I feel like this number is broken. I feel like this 29.85% number is broken. I feel like every day it's higher than it should be when I'm remembering what the volume was yesterday, but I could be wrong. Uh, 17 and a half Paraguays. Eight, excuse me. 18. Pardon me. 18 yeah. and a half Paraguays. Yeah. We'll send you a neat transaction. And fear, greed index. Hey, fear, greed. Meh. Is it a 50? Eh, which way do we go? Fear, greed. Meh. I don't know. Um, And we're going to bring Kelly on here in just a second. And when Kelly comes on, um, after that, I'm going to show you guys about the big mistake that I made in my trade. Um, ben, love the channel. This is Zach Sachs. Wanted to share the best thing the average American can do for crypto is to change your voter registration to Democrat and vote for RFK in the primaries. Well, I don't know if you know about uh, the way our president and his people operate, um, but uh, even if everybody votes for RFK, somehow Joe Biden will still be the nominee. It's amazing, isn't it? It's incredible. It's amazing. Listen, it's incredible. Ben. It's incredible. They did not try to steal the election. And to make sure they, that you know that they didn't steal the election, if you talk about it, they will arrest you. So, you know. I still have never met a person that uh, voted for Joe Biden. Never met a person, I don't think. Well, maybe, I don't think maybe two. people voting for him. I think they counted animal I think we got votes. two in this office. I think that's about it. They what? They got two in this office. Yeah. I think so. Oh, nice. I don't want to dox them. Good for Joe. I don't want to dox them. Good for Joe. But I will say neither one of them wanted to vote for him, but they both did. Neither mm. one of them were excited about it, and they did. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, oh, Mr. Techno Goody says, hey, Ben, I chose the show. You and your crew do a great job. Take a bow. Well, if you mm. would give me a bow, I would take it. Um, you know, I'm trying to get into bow hunting, actually. You know, Have you seen those yeah. videos going viral, like the turkey hunting? But the arrow's got like the four, like really long blades. So when it hits the turkey, it like obliterates it the evaporates head. evaporates the turkey. It's like a Randy like Johnson. explodes. Like a Randy Johnson fastball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. So those are fun. Okay. That looks fun. All right. Uh, let's see. Come meet them. It's called the anti-Trump vote. Exactly. You do what you got to do. Well, yeah. I mean, that's why people voted for Joe Biden. They weren't happy about it. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm just saying. All right. Uh, H-bar up 10% today. Cool. Hey. Yeah. Uh, Solana um, up 4.69%. And I think... I think I got a big interview maybe this week with some H bar folks. Do you really? Maybe. I think so. Okay. May have to do it remote. I did a Ben Gertzel video or one remote, so it should be fine. Um, 
Quant max supply 14 million, Ether scan max supply 44 million. I don't know. Is there a token swap? I don't know. Somebody uh, can somebody look into that. Yeah. Uh, text Quant AJ. Market cap and yeah, they're but saying Ether scan showing 44, 44 million. million. You can look into that, one, Kelly, after the show. Oh my God, guys, Solana is up. Mm. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that, I thought that was the end of civilization. So yeah, it's up yeah, today. That was a good lead. Four point six five percent. Um, e cash, Bitcoin cash fork, uh, four point eight nine percent. Algorand up four point seven two percent. A lot of good gainers today. A lot of the two, three, four percent range. Pretty good. Um, let's see here for the week. We've got H uh, bar having the best week, and then Sheba, Sheba's having a good week. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys remember that show, Best Week Ever on VH1? No. Oh, no. we salute this person because they're having. I, I can do the guy's voice, guys. I, I actually was a voice of that show. Because he's having the best week ever. Those VH1 shows in the early 2000s they were, were so freaking fun. They were good. Pop up video. Um, what about uh, Flavors of Love? Mm. What about Flavors of Love? Y'all remember that show? I have uh, Flavor Flaves. That was a great show. What? I don't know any of these shows. It's because you're not a material girl. Tim. What about Behind the Music? Behind the Music was good. What about this one? What about True Life on MTV? Oh, yeah. True Life on MTV was a good one. You think you know, but you have no idea. Well, you want to hear something interesting, Kelly? A lot of people say that. A lot of people say, uh, you know, oh, you know, like, you remember when they used to have videos on, uh, you know, MTV? Did you know that I believe it was in the, either the late 90s or the early 2000s that MTV actually changed their name? Their name was Music Television. And they started doing all the shows, and then they renamed the channel to literally MTV. It doesn't stand for anything anymore. Just letters. Just letters. Because that they got rid of, you know, like, you know, ESPN or VH or uh, TNT. I mean, they all stand, those, those stand for something. But you just know the channels by what they, I mean, most people don't know TBS stands for Turner Broadcasting uh, Station, you know. And so they got rid of it. It, it no longer stood for music because they got away from music. They only did videos very rarely. So mm. we all complained about it. We didn't know they were telling us the whole time. Um, okay. Um, New York from, the New York show from Flavor of Love. Tiffany was her name, right? Like, I, that was a good show, too. I, I was all into those. I love those. <laughs> I remember the first season of Flavor of Love. You had, like, Hoops and Pumpkin. I remember the whole... And, and New York, I remember. Those were the last three. I'm telling you, I was into it. All right, come on, Kelly. Come do do some work here. Where, where do I... Guys, where do, where do I go right now? I don't know. You can hang out with the monkey. Tim, Tim's right. What's up, everybody? I hope everybody's doing well. Shout out to everybody that's... If you're here, if you haven't hit the like button yet, what are you doing? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Ding the bell. I'm going to show you just very briefly uh, a little bit of uh, stats here on, uh, on the charts here with uh, Bitcoin and why I think we're actually going to have what I consider a very bullish crash coming. And I actually did a very brief uh, video this morning on BitLab Academy's daily stream. I uh, wasn't able to do the whole stream. I'm doing that at 3 p.m. later on this afternoon, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you check that out. Uh, but essentially what I want to show you here on the charts is there's a couple of different uh, lines and levels that I want you all to be paying attention to. Of course, with these two white dotted lines here, we have a rising wedge with a bit of a deviation of price going above this. And it's confirmed, even though the price did go above this, we see that once it broke through, it did find support on this level several times before it actually was lost. Now, what do we know about rising wedges? Well, rising wedges predominantly end up breaking bearishly. If we ignore this upper, uh, there's upper resistance, this ascending level of resistance on the rising wedge. We can also look to this level here. And if we attach this to the first point it comes into contact with right here, we can see that we have yet again, one more rising wedge. And, and this rising wedge, we did get a small deviation above this as well, but much smaller. Uh, but we can also see from this point to this point projected out, this is exactly where we found resistance right here, which you guessed it. If we zoom out, we can see this is that level that we've been waiting. It's like the doors to the true, true sort of bullish impulse to really have follow through, which is right here in the thirty to $32,000 region. And we have not been able to tap and break through this sort of uh, high high tension zone as it feels like. And I've shown you, as I showed you before on TA about a couple of weeks ago, we've been basically finding resistance at this level for over 900 days now, where if we zoom all the way back, we can see, I guess it's not going to do it right now. And I do want to say this section is brought to you by BitGate, our trusted exchange partners, a wonderful exchange. Check it out if you haven't. Link down in the description. Now, looking here, 
a lot of tensions coming into this region. Now, what I what I showed you yesterday is this large expansion and uh, momentum and energy, monetary energy, with the bullish uh, sort of impulse to the upside here, only to get a smaller bullish impulse here, followed by yet again one more smaller bullish impulse here. So we're seeing a waning nature, a, a diminishing nature of the bullish conviction to the upside coming into this highly contested region. We can also see this region right here on the VPVR on the right, uh, and we're not able to break through this. So if the bulls are starting to lose steam, and remember, right here, this is the BlackRock foray into the crypto space, really saying, hey, we're putting in a spot ETF uh, application, uh, shortly followed by the uh, XRP summary judgment not being a security. Essentially, what we're seeing right here is the biggest news week in the history of Bitcoin. And we could not break through this level. And now we're getting a little bit of a pullback. And remember, we have two different versions of a rising wedge. Both have the same, so, uh, same sort of outcome likely, which is a breakout to the downside. Now, this is just looking at price action and patterns. Now, we can also use another free tool, which a lot of people, uh, this is used in traditional assets, basically any tradable asset over the last you know, you know decades. Uh, and if we come over here to Elliott Wave and we just look at this, uh, from here to here, that's uh, impulse one, impulse two, impulse three, impulse four, and then impulse five. So this is also showing with Elliott, the Elliott wave theory is that you tend to get uh, five different impulses, a uh, combination of bullish uh, and then retracement, bullish, retracement, bullish. And this is suggesting on Elliott wave theory that we've come into some sort of regional local top based on this move here. So what does that mean where we go from here? Well, we already saw with the rising wedges that they predominantly break out to uh, a bearish nature. And if this is a local top, well, what do we do from here? Well, we come over here on the left hand side. And yes, if you have trading view, any one of you can do this. Come down here to ABC right here. And now we can basically take this impulse down for our A. You tend to get a, a retracement up which would tend to be below what this previous high would be. And then a break breakout to the downside. Now the question is, and this is everybody's question, anytime you're trying to uh, navigate these, uh, any assets charts and trying to figure out how you can be profitable is to identify where your breakout is, but then also what's the target gonna be below this? Now the question is here, what, where is this C wave gonna take us? Is it gonna take us somewhere in the 25 to 26 range, which would keep us above this previous low, which is right here, uh, right here, just, just shy of $25,000, which would be a pretty strong level to see because if we come right here, we do option H, that gives us a horizontal line. This is a previous tops both times. So are we going to see the price action come down and tap the liquidity uh, below this and really scare people, which I think actually would probably be the healthiest thing we could be for this, see for the space. And anybody in chat that thinks I'm bearish showing this stuff, remember, we're all here. Everybody here at Hit Network, anybody that's looking at these charts that has any awareness of a calendar, any awareness of the four-year cycle, knows that we are coming into one of the most bullish periods probably in the history of Bitcoin uh, coming into this next halving and beyond because now we have this all trillions and trillions, nearly a hundred trillion dollars on the sidelines waiting to, to participate in ETFs once they're approved. Those approvals come 240 days after they enter the federal registrar, which what do you know, all of them line up right about uh, leading up right to when the halving is. So if we were to get any of those ETFs approved, then I'm looking at any opportunity here on the chart, any opportunity where this drops down, doesn't hurt my feelings. I say, hell yeah, I get another opportunity to get a better uh, a better price uh, uh, price level to prepare for more returns in the bull run. So I consider any pullback here to be actually an absolutely bullish, bullish uh, dump, bullish crash, bullish setup. So don't look at this and say, damn, it's gonna go down. Say, yes, it's gonna go down. Identify your targets using whatever strategies you like to use, whether it's Fibonacci's, horizontal levels, uh, diagonal trend lines, whatever it is. And if you don't know what any of these, these things are, come over and check out BitLab Academy. We're live every day at 1015. That's all I got. And uh, yeah, check yourself for your wreck yourself. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Kelly. I'm sure that was great. I was actually out of the room the entire time Kelly was talking. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely was not hiding behind the monkey. Okay, guys. Yeah, check it. How's his, how's his uh, hygiene going today? 
in that microphone. Mm. God, you smell so musky. Okay. Trying to think. Oh, there was. I know what that's from. There's there was a, a TikTok song that was created from a creepy pasta and talked about someone smelling musky. If anybody knows what I'm talking about. See ya, hon. Thanks. Love you. Bye, Kelly. Okay. So I want to show you guys my trade um, and the disaster of my life that occurred yesterday. Hold on, take it down for just a second. Let me, I got to gotta always log back into BitGet. Such a problem. Wait, where's, oh, my phone's in my pocket. That's a great place to have your phone. Your pocket, a lot true. of people like that. Oh. Very true. The chat liked me hiding, they say. You guys like that? You liked me hiding behind the monkey? Well, Kelly never missed a beat, though. Like, Kelly, did, did he not see me back there, you don't think? I have, Yeah, I don't think he saw me. I don't think you. he saw me. Yeah. That was a good bit. That was a good bit. We should do that more. Me hiding behind the monkey. Okay. All right. Um, Log in. You move the microphone back there. Do the whole show from behind the monkey. <laughs> Bitboy Crypto, behind the monkey. It's the name of the new show we got going on. Okay. I just scan. I scan it. Scan. Boom, 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 boom. I, this QR code scanning to log into stuff from your phone is so convenient. I love it. It's true. Try making a milkshake. Um, because the I tell you what I used to, um, or what I, the first place I ever saw do it is like you go to a hotel and you can scan the QR code from Netflix and you can get into your Netflix at the hotel. Do you stay in nice hotels like that? No, no I don't have money. Sorry, Tim. Sorry, Tim. Yeah, I'm broke. Well, you should talk to your boss. <laughs> I've been or, trying. Better idea, you should become your own boss, Tim. Oh, become your own boss. There we go. Uh -huh. Or steal the show, which is plan A for me. That was what I was talking about. Oh, I didn't know if you were. Yeah, really yeah, no, no, no. That was that yeah. was the plan. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, you think Same I was basis. firing you on the show? <laughs> if I was going to fire you, I mean, based on the comments, I would have already done it. <laughs> hey, listen, so. I mean, just like what's his name? Uh, uh, from Barstool. That he's he, good for. He hires and fires people live. Who does? Barstool, what's his name? Uh, oh, Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy, yeah. Yeah, I think Dave Portnoy kind of comes off as a douche a little bit. A little bit. A little Sometimes. Bit, yeah. I don't think I come off like that. No. May, now, maybe You're people, people. May, maybe in the audience might think I do sometimes. Maybe. I don't know. They see me attacking people. But, Allison, <laughs> thank you so much for this. Allison was out getting my Gucci bag from the airport today. Thank you, Allison. They missed your hand. They didn't see it today. Ah. Oh. Can we tell them about your big Twitter account? There's, there's a Twitter account called Allison's Hand. It's a real Twitter account. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. She, There is a rest of her, by the way. There is a rest of her. She's not the thing from Adam's Family. Have you seen the Wednesday? Have you watched Wednesday? Yeah, that, that was a good show. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. All right. So here we are on Bybit. I want to show you guys what happened. Um, we're going to go to our futures account. And... I tell you what, guys, I got freaking saved. I got saved. I got saved by setting a stop loss. So what happened yesterday is on the show we were talking about. Now, if you want to sign up for BitGet, we got a link down below for you guys. Um, but what happened is, is that I set that stop loss and I forgot. So, so I want to get this order filled. We talked about it yesterday at $29,075. It came within $5 of filling it and, and then it shot down. And I missed the trade. I would have made, I would have made probably 10 grand on that trade. It would have been amazing. Okay. But I missed it. I missed it. And so what does, what does, do the smart people do after their order clearly doesn't fill? The smart people, they not just, me. They just sit on the sideline. They wait for the next They cancel the order. Oh, do you kept the order open? I kept the order open. I, I, I even talked oh, about on the show no. why I should, on the show, I even talked about why why i shouldn't do that oh, because i i don't know like everybody's bears i think is gonna pop back up for 20 i literally said if you if i was smart the smart it feels like it's going down further right now it feels like it but the smart move would be to set along at 28.8 that would have been the smart move mm -hmm. and it turned out sure enough it was right we had bitcoin pumping today okay but i forgot to cancel the order but i did set a stop loss however when i came into my computer I don't know. BitGet's Bit gets quirky sometimes. Mm -hmm. BitGet was showing the trade still active because I wasn't logged in. And so it just never changed the numbers. 
but they kept calculating based on the chart. Right. So it was showing that I was down 0.7 or 0.07 Bitcoin, which I had only made one, uh, 0.12 in the last in the last trade. So this was the fourth trade. And thank God I had set a stop loss because I remember setting it. Because remember when we were trying to trade both ways, I said, mm -hmm. we'll set one at, you know, at this and one at that. So I, I'd set a stop loss. And so I lost like 0.1 something, 1.2 or point. Zero one two. I barely lost anything on the trade. Lost a few hundred bucks or whatever. Thank God I set the stop loss. That's why he set the stop loss. But I should have canceled the order and I didn't. So um, right now I do have a trade. Uh, I do have an order open. I'll show you guys the order I got open. On Bitcoin? Yeah, on Bitcoin. There you go. Coin M Futures. Coin M Perpetual. There it is. Okay, so I was, man, I was already plotting. I had moved some money around. For, I took profits from the Casper trade, and then I took some other USDT. I found $6,000 on the account somewhere random. So go. that was good. And I was going to pile in on a short and try to make the money back. Um, you know but, what you're supposed to do, though, when you find money that you didn't know you had? You're supposed to send it to Ukraine. And so oh, that's a good point. You misused that money. Well, I guess, and you also, you're guaranteed not to get audited when you do that, yeah, that's too. That's true, yes. Guaranteed not to get audited when you do that. That too. Yes, that's great. That's, that is the that's the new rule. So here's my order. So let me let me tell you, give you guys what I'm thinking here on this order. I've set a um I have set an order at twenty nine thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars for a short. I got my stop loss at thirty thousand and fifty dollars, and then I've got my take profit at twenty eight thousand eight hundred and fifty. And so real quick look at market. I, we're just being more um uh, what's the word I'm looking for intentional about showing market cyber because we're we're testing this indicator this week so let me remove all my drawings here or let me get rid of the well no actually i can't get rid of the volume because i used the volume to kind of calculate where i wanted this to be so here we are in the four hour chart and this is what this is the stuff you missed this morning we talked about this on the uh, on the live show on the ra 30 a.m show we also dug into some d side coins some pretty cool stuff you guys make sure you guys are subscribed and checking out that show okay so here we go here's a high Here's a lower high. Here's a lower high. Here's a lower high. Mm -hmm. What do you think this is going to be? Obviously a higher high going to the moon, guys. No, most likely not. Most likely this downtrend is going to continue. Mm -hmm. However, on this downtrend, it's been holding support like really freaking steady at, at um, about right here on this line. Why is it white? I hate when it's freaking white. It drives me insane. Number one threat to America. How, how, it really is. And why is it dotted? What? Who is who is going into my account, into my trading view account? Do we know? Because no. I thought I banned everybody from using it. I have no idea. How does it change? We have to find out. Is it? I, I don't know. What did you do? What, what's cha what changed? I changed it? the password because Frank and I figured out one time that, you know, uh, I think you can have five devices at once. And yep. so Frank in the beginning was using mine too. Yep. And then I think Tony was using mine. Tony. And then somebody else was using mine. We had like five different people using it. And so anytime you go in and change anything, when the other person would refresh your screen, it'd make everything their changes. And so uh, we do now have our own here. Um, I don't know. Can we, can we talk to Steak about making that trans uh, opaque a little bit? We can try. They didn't want it opaque. I, opaque should be fine. I, I will. I will make We're, another note. Yeah, yeah. Just opaque, not transparent. Okay. Opaque. So, like, if there's something behind it, I'm trying to show that they, yep. they can see it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're gonna be very happy because we're gonna start playing stake on um on the uh, morning show. Sometimes. How do you spell opaque? O p oh, <clears throat> opaque. O p a q u e. Opaque. Thank you. That's my time. That was like a spelling bee. It was that, that was good. a point. You passed the next round. Yeah, I always made it to the next round. It was always a championship. It was always the semifinals I lost in. Mm. I lost so many times in the finals of a spelling bee, and it was always a fluke. Like one time I spelled mirror with a W on accident. I don't know why I did it. I ate paper the whole day. I literally did. I literally did it. School. I was so embarrassed because the girl I was, I was up against, she wasn't even really smart. No offense to her. Mm. No offense to her. She wasn't smart. It was just me and her because one word had taken out almost the entire class and I spelled it right. She was left. So, and her word was basket and my word was mirror. A very easy word. 
I spell Mirror M I R R O W. I still have not gotten over that to this day. It was just like a brain fart. I don't know. When I said it, when I said it, the entire class, Miss Smithyman's fifth grade class back in 1993 or 1994, 93, the entire class, their jaws went. And I couldn't figure out why they were doing that. Mm. Like, how did I misspell mirror? I know how to spell mirror, guys. I'm very smart. I never miss spelling words. I know. And then in my brain, I heard that W replay in my brain. And for years, when people would ask me to spell mirror out loud, I would still, my brain wanted to spell it with a W. And I don't know why at this day. Mm. So. Tragic. Yeah. It was just she and I. Aunt Lynn, get off my grammar. Okay. I, I can be grammatically correct when I would want to. Okay. But I, I ain't want to right now. I'm so insecure. I was very insecure about my spelling. I love spelling correctly. I love it. I do. I do. Guys, I, I just like to be, I like, I'm a perfectionist. I like to do things right. It's what I do. It doesn't necessarily come from insecurity. It just comes from I like to do things right. I like to win. I'm, I'm way more competitive than I am insecure. I'll tell you that much. Mm-hmm. Kills me when I lose stuff. Um, okay. So back to this chart here. Back to the chart. Predictably, we're going to hit a, a, another downtrend here okay however we've held support really good around twenty eight thousand eight hundred dollars so that's why i set a short at or excuse me yes i set a short short, at 28 no 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 No, that that's that's the support here so when this is my take profit area my take Mm -hmm. profit area i set around twenty eight eight. okay because it's bounced off of this so many times, but he's gone to it and wicked below it the last two times, but came right back up. Mm-hmm. For the position price, I looked up and I said, okay, where is the volume at above this candle here? And the volume um, is uh, about, you know, uh, let's see, what did I set it at? Let me double check and look here. What did I set it at? Right now, the price is at 29580 I set it at $29,780. See, who's, what is this? Is this what Kelly. Kelly was showing? Kelly, yeah. Chaos. Hmm. Elliot, wait. I wonder if it's Kelly. <laughs> it is Kelly. It is Kelly. I think he did. It I is think Kelly. Look at the dots. Chart. Look at the dots. Look at the dots. Oh, no. It's Kelly. We'll deal with him after the show. It's God, all happening. Kelly. Mm. It's gracious. Okay. All right. Back to this. Um, okay, so last, okay, so this is why I did this, okay? So the last time, it went all the way up to $30,000, 30000 okay? This time, I looked at this line here, and I said, 29.8 is this line of this volume. I'll show you guys exactly what I mean here. So I said, 29.8 is this longest volume stick right here. 29.822, there it is right there. You see it, boom. That's the that's the most volume above this number that would still be a lower high. Mm-hmm. So that's why I set it there. That I would like to explain why I set my stop loss where I set it at. My stop loss, where did I set my stop loss at? A, right at $30,000. Because if it goes up to 30,000, I think I said at 30,050, it would now be a higher high. So then it's got a great chance to break out. So that's like a little thought process of where, why I set it, where I set it, where I set it, um, the take profit and the stop loss. We're going to try to make up for my little bitty blip yesterday that was just a mistake because I kept it open. So, um, so there we go. Mm. All right. Um, moving on to the top story here. ETH dominates. Bloomberg analyst predicts mass die-off of zombie Ethereum competitors. And, man, I told you guys for a long time there's way too many Layer 1s. Yeah. I'm sick of Layer 1s. I'm sick of Layer 1s. I'm sick of them. Like, how many do we need? How many do we need? We don't need as many as we have. I know that much. How many How many do we need, Ben? How many is a good number? Five to 10. Hmm. Five to 10, I think is good. Solid. Yeah, five to 10. We don't need 712, which is probably what we have. Yeah. Like, well, if you, 1. let's 1. go. 1.8 million is what we Well, that's total coins, I know, I'm not layer ones. But if we go to categories here and we click on layer ones, this only shows 47. But as you said, CoinGecko doesn't have as many as... No, CoinGecko has more. It well, have more? they have... They have no, no. No, they don't They don't have... But CoinMarket actually only has 10,000. Keep that in mind. Okay. It says 1.8 million, but they only have 10,000 listed. Fair, fair. So I don't know how many CoinGecko has listed total, but um, 
you know, like you start looking at these things, multivac, that was when people were showing hard last year. I mean, that thing has been nothing but down, it looks like, according to the chart. Um, Phantasma was really high at one point, not doing well. Moon River, another one that had a lot of potential on, on DOT and doesn't really seem to be doing much. Um, Ergo, okay, Ergo's okay. He's had a big shot up here recently. Kadena, um, Sui. Chili's, is, is Chili's a layer one? What, why is Chili's a layer one? What is he even doing being a layer one? Like, be an NFT coin. Just get, build yourself on Ethereum. You don't need your own chain. Hmm. Like, you don't, you start, look, Phantom is absolute trash. Phantom is trash, guys. And can we talk about somebody? Can we talk about Andre Cronier? Andre Cronier is one of the biggest scammers who ever hit cryptocurrency. This guy, Phantom, he was all in, he was all in with Sam with uh, this safe, safe protocol, this recover protocol, safe token. There was all a big scam. Sam hacked it all. Andre knew about all of it. The, the price of Phantom has been based on, the, is Andre Cronier on the board right now or is he not? Like, it, this guy, everything that he touches, it pumps when he wants it to pump and he makes all the money and everybody else gets screwed, guys. People call him the godfather of DeFi. No, no. This guy's a money grubber. That's all that he is. Go look at the track record of all his projects. Phantom pumps when he needs liquidity. That's what I'll tell you. Phantom's trash. Now, Look, does Phantom have some good, some good spooky swap? Has it got some good stuff about it? Sure. Is anybody using it? No. No one is freaking using it. Uh, they'll, they'll give you fake user numbers, I'm sure. Harmony, trash. Ever since Harmony had that hack and they made the very bad decision about how they handled it, mm. trash, okay? Like, Elrond has some stuff. I'm definitely not going to call it trash. Injected Protocol is one I want to look into on the show. Tezos. A lot of pop, no sizzle. A mm. lot of pop, no sizzle. You start looking at the flow. Like, go check out, like, like flow is good for NFTs, but I just, like, why did you need your own chain? I just don't understand why all these projects feel like they need their own chains. Because they make more money. Crypto.com makes more money by having their own chain. Everybody makes more money when you have your own chain. Everything happens on your chain. So, look, I like Crypto.com. I like CRO, but I just, you didn't need your own chain. You were fine being on Ethereum. So, anyways, it is what it is. All right. Um, so, uh, let's see what they're talking about, the ones they're talking about going away. Um, let's see. Competitors may soon fizzle out. Abysmal second quarter financials. Um, let's see here. Ethereum layer one, it shows you their profits. ETH layer twos, it shows you they're negative, which is shocking to me. Mm -hmm. Look at all that are layer ones crushed um let's see if this has now look at this pansy article here from the daily auto can you name some can you name some that need to go away i mean what, what are you scared you're gonna say zombies we name some i can name a lot more on there if i didn't mention it, it's on the bottom it's already a shoe in to go away i sound like a maxi I... how can you get i sound like a maxi when i'm telling you that like five to ten is probably a good no... guys there's not going to be a zillion networks we're all using in the future. It's just not going to be. It's yeah. not going to be. They're not all going to succeed. Ethereum, Cardano, the, that one coin that I absolutely hate because of who the founder is. Dot will probably be around. It's got good infrastructure. Um, HBAR, Algorand, ICP, like these are good layer ones. There's other ones. Elrond is okay. I hate how many rebrands they've done. but They've, they've got some stuff that they do. Uh, multiverse or whatever they call it now. Like, there's some good stuff out there. Almost all of it's garbage, though. And, and this is what it boils down to. Supply and demand. We talk about supply and demand a lot, and we talk about it in regards to what? Money, charts, prices, right? Supply and demand is a concept in life. There's not the demand for this many layer ones. Yeah. There's not the demand. Layer twos, huge demand for layer twos. There's not the de There is not, there's an oversupply of layer ones, and there's a, a a low demand for these. There's a low demand and a high supply. Of course, the chart's going to look like that. Ethereum, Cardano, Binance Smart Chain. Um, you know, uh, I don't even know what other big ones are. <laughs> Those are the top <laughs> three, right? Those are the top three. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I already said the the other ones I like. 
Um, let's see. Am I missing a major one? Solana. There you go. Solana. Tron. Both both of those. Tron probably needs to stay um, just for the way the tether works on it. Solana can go away for all I care. Um, I wish Polkadot. I wish they would just change. I wish I wish Gavin Wood would go away. If right. Gavin Wood goes away, if he completely steps out of, of Polkadot 100%, I can go back to supporting it. And everybody who is in Polkadot, you should demand that. You should demand this child molester. Tell stories about it. Way more horrible stuff he's done than that too, that I know about. Demand this man step away completely from your project. Mm -hmm. If you can support that, what else can you support? I, I don't know. Are you you big on uh, you know betting on human trafficking? Is that what you want? You know? I guess it's a cool thing to bet on. You know, how many people are coming over in the cargo ship this week? Make a lot of money on it. Probably not ethical. That's what you're looking at with the founder of Polkadot. Right. We should really start a campaign to get rid of this guy. That's really what we should do, to be honest. Um, he's a very, very, very bad person. But Polkadot's infrastructure, I, it, it will probably do okay. The price will do okay, I'm sure. Um, okay, Avalanche. I think Avalanche has trash people behind it, but it's a decent project, I think. Tuncoin, one I'm really interested in getting. Did they list Tuncoin on, on the layer ones? They did not. Yeah. Is Tuncoin on Ethereum then? Thought it had its own chain. People were talking about projects built on it. I mean, you can build on it, I guess, and then be its own chain. Yeah. You can. No, I, I, it's not on a list. It's not on the list. It's not on the list ones. for sure. Um, I just, I want to do a deep dive myself on it. On its uh, chain explorers. Yeah, they have their own chain explorer, but they also have Etherscan. So maybe it is still an ERC-20. I don't even remember where you look to check anymore. I thought it was on the networks. Look up if it's an ERC-20. That's on, yeah, I'm looking up right now. Okay, thank you. Um, so there you go. So yeah, of course, we're going to see a lot of these zombie layer ones go away and a lot of the major ones are going to make it. And then you have the new ones. You have Aptos, you have Sui. Like these are new ones. You got new, com constantly new competitors coming to the, to the space. Um, so you just made the list, Chris Jericho? Oh, uh, who is that? Is that is that a rock quote? Is that what that is? Uh, Chris Jericho been on the show before, actually, what? believe it or not. Ton, uh, look who's in the chat. Under his own name for the first time ever, Nick Damati. Nick Damati had a baby, everybody. Yeah. Congratulations to Nick and Katie. We love them. They're great. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank He's you. hunting down Dave Digital in the chat um, right oh, now. Oh, he is so. right now? He's trying to take that Another rich. Another girl, too. Another girl? So four, four Brian, Nick, network babies. And you. Well, and TJ, all so, girls. Well, I have a boy. Oh, you have, have boy. you have a boy. You have a boy. You have a boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brody, Brody, Brody's yeah, gonna, Brody. Yeah, Brody's gonna have his pick. You know. Oh God. Oh God. Well, I just I look. I gotta say this. If I'm picking a father-in-law out of out of those three, out of Nick, TJ, and Brian, I'm probably going with Brian. I'm probably going with Brian. Brian's chill. Brian's chill. That's Nick true. and TJ, you are gonna have a hard time with them. You have a hard time. <laughs> you have a hard time with them. Um. <laughs> We, get, lo look, give, we love Nick, we love Nick and DJ. We yeah. love them. I think Brian would be a, a, a cooler father-in-law. Be chill. Brian would be real chill. So, um, Cardona Bean says, can't I get a wrench? You listen every day. Well, I you haven't commented enough for me to even know you're in the chat. So you need to comment a little bit more. Everybody. It's yeah, well, if you're in here a good bit, I will give you a wrench. They're like, if I see you over, you know, some people don't want the wrench. But, um, you know, certainly... Like, you know, I recognize Alexandra G. I see her in here sometimes. If you're a girl, you stand out more, obviously, because there's only like four of you. Um, Mark the Shark, I saw him this morning in the chat. I, I, he's newer. I haven't seen him in here. Um, let's see. Who else do I definitely recognize? David Brumbelow, know him. I think I've met him in real life, I'm pretty sure. I think. Isn't that right? He hangs out with uh, Rice, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, let's see. Who else do I recognize in here? Uh, Mr. Techno Goody, there, you, Mr. Techno Goody doesn't want a wrench. He's, I would give him a wrench. He doesn't want one. He says, "I'm trying to look in here." Kevin O'Leary, who? Kevin O'Leary. Yeah. Kevin O'Leary and Gary Ginzer, I think, are played by the same person. But more than likely, yeah. Yeah, more than likely. Like just like in real life. All right, let's see. You can give Alexandra a wrench. Alexandra comments all the time. You give her a yeah? wrench. Okay. Yeah, I see her in here all the time. You can give her one. She, she you got to scroll up a little bit. She's up there. Um, I like having, I like having female mods because we don't have that many. We have Jen, we have Shannon. Where's Shannon been? Have you seen Shannon in a while? I saw Shannon this morning in Investing Bros. Oh, she, she was. She, she's a mod Investing Bros. And she was hanging out with us. Yeah. Shannon, yeah. Shannon, mm. Shannon, 
Shannon. For real, for real? Shannon. Okay. Sh Shannon's like one of my all-time faves. Love Shannon. She's great. Uh, we got Jen, Jen. You know who I miss, though? Do y'all miss? Do y'all remember Marcy? No. Marcy no. was freaking legit. Marcy. And then Marcy disappeared. I don't know where Marcy went. I don't know if she got out of crypto. She might be in. She might be one of George's mods now. I don't know. Um, but, okay. All right, moving on here. Ethereum has burned over 50% of all ETH issued um, since merge back to all-time high. Over two years since Ethereum merged, it's proof of work layer with the proof of stake beacon chain via the merge. That was in August? I feel like that was in November of 2020. 2020. The merge? I'm talking about 2020. November of 2020 is when they started the transition. They started the transition to um, officially to, um, to the merge. Mm -hmm. So in November of 2020, they started it. And then it looks like in August, two years ago, it's when they merged the proof of work layer on and the proof of stake with the beacon chain. One year ago in September is when the merge actually happened because I was in uh, Alaska when when the merge happened. Okay, Marcy ran away with TJ. <laughs> Marcy was Brenda's alternate. Y'all didn't even know Brenda. Yeah, yeah. Brenda. Brenda was all over TJ. Then we turned out turned out Brenda was a man. A couple. It was a couple men actually. So. Um, all right. Yeah, Nancy, you got to start commenting. That's it. You know, you got to start commenting. We, we, we love people. Aunt Lynn. Aunt Lynn. She, Aunt Lynn, you got to, Aunt Lynn, I'm, I'm scared to make you a mod. It's true. You will ban everybody. Atlant, Aunt Lynn with power would you, be Aunt Lynn with thing. power is a scary thing. She would. Terrifying. She'd probably kick DZ out. She might. Yeah. She might ban me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I make one grammatical mistake and she might, might ban me. I tell you, you soften up a little bit, at Lynn, over the next couple of weeks. I'll give you a wrench. I'll give you one. Oh, we got a, our party next Friday. There's a great, great name that just wants to go ahead and get it out there. So I'm a know. girl. Yeah. Can I have a spanner? Mm. What's a spanner? Cocker spanner? Cocker a spanner. spanner. You have sitters and spanners. That's what I heard. I don't know what that means. I just don't even know what it means. Um, okay. All right, moving on here. Um, catching up with crypto audiobook narrated by yours truly comes out June 20th. Let's let's uh well, let's that's, hold on now. Let's say, we're, we're crossing over into some X, into X here. yeah. But I want to retweet this just because people need to understand. Do it. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I got that. I got I got it, Drew. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stop, mm -hmm. Drew. Will you stop being the Aunt Lynn in studio? Will you relax? Oh we gosh. love Aunt Lynn. Aunt Lynn, we love you. I can't stop. <laughs> She's giving us a hard time. We love Aunt Lynn. Aunt we Lynn, love Aunt Lynn. Aunt Lynn is the Drew of chat. She's yeah. a drove chat. We love it. Just ban everybody. <laughs> Aunt Lynn's feisty. She is. She's feisty. Just like Drew. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin O'Leary. Come on. Come on. Uh, hey, guys. It's time for the X Minute. Check this out. There's a lot at stake right now. on the segue. I think he really didn't die. They said he died on a segue. I don't think that's true. Mm. People are saying that's false. Mm. Crypto Brat, I'd give Crypto Brat one. You want to wrench Crypto Brat? She, she's in here all the time. I met her. She was in, um, she was in Texas. You're the same one, right? You were in Texas. I remember your name. Um, she came to our Austin one. And I swear, what? Mike, I swear Mike Novogratz was at our Austin meetup. Right. Should I make her a moderator? He came. Yeah, you can make her one. If she wants Mike it. Mike yeah. came to meet you? Novogratz? No. I, I swear Mike Novogratz was there. He lives in Austin, right? Somebody look that up. Mike Novogratz lives in Austin, I think. I swear it looked just like him. And he was, so the way we do the, the book tour meetups is I talk for, for an hour. Um, they spend, I, I know you're very nice, Aunt Lynn. I know you're very nice. You're very nice. Um, I talk for an hour and then we do Q&A for an hour or so. And then we sign books and everybody gets in line, takes a picture, signs books, you know, the whole thing. But they have check to see if they have an office there. This is weird. It says he he has a home in New York, but that doesn't say that's where he lives most of the time. So I'm, the I'm guy worried. looked just like Mike Novogratz, mm. and maybe he can confirm if it was him or not. Maybe he would lie though. Maybe he would lie. I don't know. 
He was out there very interested the entire time. And I said to myself, okay, obviously when he comes to get his book signed, I'm going to, wait, are you my Novogratz? Look just like him. I should have checked for the Solana tattoo. So I should have checked for Yeah. He didn't get in the line. After mm. the Q&A, he left. Did anybody else notice it? Was anybody else there? Was anybody else there? Did anybody else see it? Um, yeah. I don't see any about Austin. It looks like he lives in New York. Oh, that's what they say. That's what, what they say. Where is, where is uh, uh, Galaxy Digital? Where's their headquarters? Not New York, I guarantee it. See where theirs is. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, you were in Miami and Austin. That's right. I remember that. Okay. Okay. All right. So here we are with the X Minute. Brought to you by Steak, our favorite sponsor. We love Steak. They are the best. Guys, uh, if you want to check out the audio version of Catching Up Crypto, you can go to my profile. I, I uh, refresh that. This is Jamie. Um, Jamie says, an initial look at PayPal's stablecoin code suggests a number of features. Freeze and unfreeze accounts. Wipe a frozen account and burn its tokens. Supply is controlled centrally via Apple, a supply controller. Assignment of asset protection role to addresses. Tokens can be reclaimed by the owner. Uses an older version of Solidity Compiler, and USDC seems to be the same case. Guys, I'm shocked. I'm flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. F-L-A-B-B-E-R-G-H-A-S-T-E-D. Flabbergasted. Impressed with that one, weren't you? That was good. Look it up. That was really good. Nailed it. Yep. Nailed it. Nailed it. Why are you grimacing, Tim? If I nailed it. Oh, well, because you were talking about how you were flabbergasted, and I was going to tell you about another thing you'd be flabbergasted about. Where do you think uh, Galaxy Digital headquarters is? New York, New York. Is it really? New York, New York. What a bad place to have a crypto yeah. company. They must have the bit license. They must. Mm-hmm. They must have the bit license. They must. Mm. Crypto is for Dale Taco says, love the audiobook. The audiobook's great. So, um, Okay. Guys, I'm shocked with this PayPal news. Could you believe that PayPal would want to freeze their tokens? Mm. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, they were talking about um, adding it on Huobi. was talking about listening, I believe. And aren't they, like, going out of business? That's know. what they were saying yesterday. It's insolvent. And Huobi was, hey, we'll let's PayPal coin. Obviously. <sighs> uh, doing it for attention. Hey, guys, here we go. We got big news here. Four. That's the news. Four. Mm. Uh, Binance is pleased to announce that it has become the first fully licensed crypto exchange in El Salvador. Let's keep making crypto more accessible. And I can confirm today, by the way, I can't confirm unless, unless this, I don't think this person is going to flake out. I mean, said they're coming. So in from Binance will be at the mega yacht party in Dubai. Okay. Yeah. So very excited about that. Talk to her today. Um, if you haven't been hacked, you're not doing it right. Have you, this is from Justin Williams, the CEO of Umeo. Um and longtime best friend of uh, of Bitboy Crypto, uh, have you been ha- came up with a name Bitboy? Justin Williams came up with a name Bitboy. Yeah. He created. Did I didn't you not know that? that? Yeah, y'all don't know, know that. that. I did. I Justin know. Williams created Bitboy. I created the art. So, which is funny because oh. he's a better designer than I am. But he came up with he, the whole idea for Bitboy is a comic book cartoon superhero. That's what he wanted to do. Bitboy for Bitcoin for for crypto, and Crazy. then I did the illustrations of all the all the characters, and we tried doing some things. He helped me write some of the script for some of this stuff. He made, if you go back to our first video, um, to our first video we ever had on this channel was this. It was called Talking Bits. It was like, we couldn't get the full show going. So we were like, let's just do like have a talk show thing at first. There's mm-hmm. BitBoy. There he is. This is Carlos Matos. And uh, Justin did all the art for Carlos Matos, actually. And this here, this is something famous. We call this a parm. Mm. We call it a parm because all of these pieces are individual. So if you imagine like just that, there it is. There it is. That's the piece that Justin created. Oh, God. And we call that a parm. Call that a parm, guys. Interesting. Like, not like your mom used to get. Wow. At the salon, a parm. A parm. Wow. parm. Yeah. I'm, I'm tracking. My mom, yeah. my mom is a hairstylist. She used to give perms. Really? She there is this old lady that would come to my house, yeah. my house like once a uh-huh. quarter or so and get a perm. Yeah. So it was the stinkiest thing. Duh. So perms, parms. Yeah. Justin gives parms. Yeah. That's what we did. But anyways, Justin said this. If you haven't been hacked, you're not doing it right. Yeah. Have you been hacked? 
Justin was hacked for $40,000 back in late 2020. It's rough. Yeah, uh, on a, a fake Uniswap site. He Googled Uniswap instead of going directly to the website, clicked on it, and uh, they stole his money. And oh, no, well, hold on, hold on. Didn't just click on it. He had to give him his private key. He, he, he put the private key in. I mean, oof. We were reverse engineering what happened. And I said, wait a second. You said you went to Uniswap. Did you go directly to the site? And he's like, I can't remember. I said, you know what? I could have sworn I saw a Google ad the other day that was a scam Uniswap site. And I Googled Uniswap and sure enough, right at the top, how is Google not? I, I can't make heads or tails of it. Why Google does what they do. They, they should, that's negligence. Mm -hmm. You can't get a crypto ad through, but you can get an ad for a fake exchange up. Sketchy. Well, they had more money. They paid more. No, money. it's not money. It's not money. You can pay any amount of money. You can set your budget for whatever in crypto. It doesn't matter. It's not the money. I know. I it's the negligence and the way that these people are able to get around some of that stuff, you know? So there we go. Um, Bitcoin OG Adam Back bets Bitcoin will break 100K before the next halving. Um, here's his outlook. Some people think Adam Back is Satoshi. I don't know. I believe I know who Satoshi is. I believe. I will never say it on this channel. You'll never hear me say. But I'm this is I, I'm very confident that I know who Satoshi is. Very confident. Um, and it's not who I've said it was before. It turns out it's somebody different, actually. So Hal Finney was who I thought it was forever. It's not Hal Finney. Ooh, I'm interested to hear this. Well, I haven't told you. You haven't told me. Can oh. we mute the mics? Can oh, I'll tell, tell you off air. I'll tell you off air. I won't tell you on air. I won't, you really I was, don't know? I, I have no idea. I haven't had this conversation. I was really? thinking it was Craig Wright. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll, we can talk. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. And now, and now, the CIA is going to come to your house. There we go. Um, tell them to let my dogs it's out. It's not David Schwartz. Y'all chill. Uh, they said Bitcoin is is still ripping. Is it a good guy? Yes, it's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not a bad person. It's a really, really, really good guy. I would say. Um, that's a, sorry. It says a TJ. No, I said it's a really good guy. Oof. I I, I went on the blockchain basement yesterday for a while with TJ. I saw. Yeah. 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 You well, time. I got time now. I've reorganized my schedule. I have time for a, everything. That was a tight couch. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Especially with me and Kelly and AJ there. Yeah. But you know what? I don't mind, you know, bumping leg hairs with those guys. All right. Let's see what he says here. Um, inventor of Hashcash, a proof of work system that was later incorporated into the Bitcoin mining process. He claims he's not Satoshi, which obviously everyone who is Satoshi claims it's not. Can you scroll up a little bit? Mike Piazza. There you go. You nailed it. Keep going up. Jed McCaleb, David Schwartz, Steve Jobs, David Schwartz, Elon. I don't think a keep going up. Keep going up until they, they start. Not a single person said who it was. Not a single person. Not a single person. So interesting. That's the only hint I'll ever give you. Up until I said that point. Um, okay. So he says, I bet Bitcoin reached or exceeds uh 100K. Oh, wow. Yeah. Whoa, this is big right here. This is big. Adam Back says he believes he I said he was Satoshi one time on Twitter and he said he wasn't. He he responded to me. I think he said I was an idiot. Nice guy. <laughs> Let's be cool, Adam. I'm cool with you now. Let's be cool. Now that I know you're not Satoshi, I'll never say it again. But Adam Back saying he believes Bitcoin's gonna exceed a hundred thousand dollars between now and the having is big. Because let me tell you what that means. That being super cycle is on. If Bitcoin hits 100K, that automatically means, if Bitcoin hits 100K before the halving, that automatically means the reversal of diminished returns for the first time ever in Bitcoin history. That's pretty good if that happened. Somebody said, if he's wrong, what will he do? Eat his own parm? Mm. He grated up Parmesan cheese, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, do you know what that reference is in regards to? Mm -mm. God, man, so y'all are so new in crypto. You know what it is, Drew? What, the Parmesan cheese? No, 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 the or he will eat his. Oh, oh, oh no, no, okay, uh, that part, yeah, I know what yeah. that's reference. John yes, McAfee. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, with that prediction, man, I tell you yes. what. Oh, yeah, that was I a thought gross you were talking about one. the Parmesan that cheese part. I was like, I have no idea what Parmesan cheese has to do with crypto. The fact that this guy said Satoshi is Jerry Glanville is an amazing comment. Does anybody know who Larry, Jerry Glanville is? No. If we went to every single person in this entire office, I don't think one person would know who that is. That was the coach of the Falcons in like 1991. Wow. Probably. 
uh, uh, June Jones took over for him. I don't know who the coach was before that because I wasn't watching football before Jerry Glanville. Started watching football first year. Holy cow. What year did he start? Uh, that, they had a big thing. They were back in black. When the Falcons started wearing black, they used to wear red. He was a coach starting for Atlanta. Let's see here. 1991, I think. Come on now. Maybe 92. Atlanta Fal... Ooh. Let's see. Defensive coordinator. I'm seeing where he's defensive coordinator. Hold on. Where is it saying he's a, where's the head coach? Jerry Glenn. Oh, yep. Okay. Uh, 90, 90. 1990. 90. 90. That was the first year I started watching football. Yeah. 1990. Mm-hmm. There you go. Through 93. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Grayscale is curious. We're way behind today, but who yeah. cares? I, do y'all mind going to 115? I don't. I don't know. Does about anybody that. have problems with going to 115 with, with a show? True. We're My, here. No, I'm just saying in general. I'm just saying in general. Like, are y'all okay with us going to 115? What did the chat say? Should we end the show at one or should we do 115? Because I just, if there's a lot, it, it, I like doing the show. I like talking yeah. to my people. I'm freed up now. My schedule's freed up in the afternoon. So, mm, 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 mm. see what they say. I just don't want to rush the show. I, I want the show to happen as it happens. Yeah. I don't want us to ever be like, we're so far behind. We need to catch up and run through this stuff. Like, uh, I'm asking. A lot of yeses. A lot of yeses. Just keep, just, just keep up a going, just working. Cool. Okay. Grace Gill's curious graph of U.S. presidential election and Bitcoin's price. Well, pff, why is this curious? Because, I mean, you already know, right, that the Bitcoin cycles track along with the presidential election years. Mm-hmm. Right? We already know that. So... Are they giving us something unique here? Let's see. <laughs> Dan says, end it now. <laughs> All right, big boy out. Do, 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 do. Stop zooming out when I walk off the screen. That changes where I have to walk off to, Drew. <laughs> I'm trying to capture you leaving. <laughs> God, this, is a bit, it, this really feels like a TV show these days. Yeah. Like, I really like it. I really like what we yeah, got going you know on. What? You, Ever since TJ left, things have been so fun. No, I, like, you know what? I TJ's like still here. Like he just this. did the other office. And maybe people don't like this, but for all of our sports ball fans out there, yeah. Do you ever watch Pat? I'm you don't because he goes to the time. Pat, Pat McAfee. McAfee. Do you watch ever of watch? Course. I love Pat McAfee. He has my favorite. And again, by the love way, love Pat McAfee. I want Pat McAfee show. on the show. I want yeah. him on the show one day. I, I wouldn't be on his show. I actually I reached out to them to yeah. see about like just maybe even going up and seeing how they run their show yeah. and find out more about their team and stuff. So hopefully I get something back from. Them. But yeah, I'll, and then maybe we can and maybe through Pat we can get in with Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. which now that Aaron Rodgers is on the Jets. I'm all for Aaron. I hated him on the Packers. He's in my conference. I hated him. And plus, you know, Aaron Rodgers did beat the Falcons in 2010 in the playoffs here. They won the World Series. They crushed us at home. Killed me. But that game is how I got into tickets. And those tickets are the way that I got into Bitcoin. So Aaron Rodgers is actually yeah. responsible for me getting into crypto. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Boom. That's a true story. That's a true story. That game, selling tickets for that game, Packers versus Falcons, so I can make enough money to get my own tickets for free, a hundred bucks, because I was so poor. I sat at the very top row of the game, 2010, very top row of the Georgia Dome. That's true. Packers and Falcons. That's how I got into the ticket business, the first entrepreneurial thing I ever did. And then through the ticket business is how I ended up in crypto. So mm. there we go. And and he's very, he, he talks about Bitcoin. So I'm all for him now. And I like that he basically told people to go shove it over the jab. Like I like that he did that too. Yeah. Um, I like Aaron. Yeah, they did win the Super Bowl, but they beat the Falcons in the playoffs. And it was only the second round. It was our bye. It was our first playoff game. <sighs> okay. What year? 2010. 2010. 2010. That was Matt Ryan was quarterback yep. at the time? Matt, Ryan, Matt Ryan's first. I was at Matt Ryan's first game. I was in rehab still. I was an intern at rehab. Listen, I was a and big, I bought tickets that first game, and the first pass ever was a touchdown. I was a big Falcons fan when Vic was here because I love Vic. Michael Vick's my favorite. Oh. Michael Vick and Kobe are my two favorite athletes of all time. Like I loved Michael Vick. Broke my so heart. Long story. When Michael Vick's kind of why I, Michael Vick's kind of why I, I overdosed and almost died. Oh man. Yeah, believe it or not, because I was on so many drugs that in my brain that night, this is back in 2007. Back in in my brain, all night they were showing Michael Vick. It was the, the weekend that all of his people had turned on him, oh, man. and he was officially like he was done. There was no defending anymore. Yeah. Like yeah. he was he was going away. Yeah. And that weekend. Like, I had my Michael Vick jersey in a clothes basket in my car. And that night, I was just so out of, out of it that in my brain, I had decided that headline news on CNN that was showing it all night was fake. It was mm-hmm. fake. It was like a re- It was fake. Because there's no way that logically my favorite player ever in the history of the world is involved in this gigantic sports scandal. So I go out to my car. I can't find my phone. I go out to my car to look for my phone. 
And I carried my clothes basket with me everywhere because I traveled a lot. So I opened the door and that Mike Vick jersey sitting on top of the clothes basket is what sent me insane. Oh, man. Isn't that wild? Crazy. That's a wild story. If I ever tell that whole story on this channel, y'all will not even believe it. It was insane. Um, okay. All right. No, I will not get to, this, to the topics faster. Some days. Some days I will. Some days I won't. We'll see. I don't know how I'm feeling. Bitcoin prices drifted downward some 3.7% on the 30-day window. Uh, during the 2012 presidential election, Bitcoin's price was 11 bucks. Four years later, during the 2016 election, it was 710. Four years after that, it was traded at $15,000. If it repeats that pattern, prices have a way up to go before the elections as well as after. What? <sighs> Crypto potato. Crypto potato. Old crypto potato, old friend. I love potatoes. I, mm. Do you love potatoes? What's your favorite way to eat potatoes? Al Groton. I actually don't like Al Groton that much, but it sounds cool. Mm. Crypto potato. Why are you telling us the most obvious information that's ever been given? This is like, if you watch this show and you read this article, you're going to be like, why are they, why in the world are they, and I, by the way, random note, I'm not, in any way supporting what Mike Vick did. I just want to be very right. clear. But I do love that he changed his life and he's a new, per, you know, totally new person now. Yeah. Love that about him. Love, love a good, uh, what do they call that kind of story? Redemption. Love a redemption story. Mm -hmm. Love it. Still mad about what he did with how, how he said, like he didn't really do that much with the Falcons on purpose, but whatever. But he didn't study his books and all that, but whatever. Yeah. Point is, this article gives you, no, you know what this article says? Hey guys, there's a Bitcoin cycle. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of it. There's a Bitcoin cycle, guys. Bitcoin cycle. There it is. Yes. We all know that in the presidential elections, Bitcoin has new all-time highs. We all know that. We know it's got a ways to go to get there, right? Now, it hits, be clear. In the last two, it hit all-time highs. No. In the last cycle, it hit all-time high after the presidential election, but still in the presidential year. It was in December, right? So. This could hit all-time highs. I'm predicting it to hit all-time highs in December of 2024. Yeah. So this makes perfect sense. This aligns exactly what we tell you. I can't believe... I want you guys to think about this, guys. There are literally people out there who don't realize that there's a Bitcoin cycle, and I talk to them all the time. Isn't that insane? We preach that on this channel so hard. Um, Yeah, it, it happens. It usually hits all time high after the election, either December or January or February, right? You know, right after the election. Well, what? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking back to 2017. It hit a new we all time hit, in January 2017, didn't it? We topped the new. We Jan set a new January all time high. 2017. This was, no, 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 no. 2016. I mean, no, that was been before. Oh wait, hold on. No, it was January 2017. That's when Bitcoin hit a new all time high. Or was it February? Nope, it was March. March. Okay. Well, beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, still it did, not January, or February, but March. Okay. Yeah. So I was close. Um, hit all time high then, but it's it's an all time high from the last cycle. That's what you got to be looking. That's what you're looking at now. It's not the all time high. So people get confused when I say we're going to hit a new all time high in December of 2024. What I mean by that is Bitcoin will go above sixty nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That doesn't mean that's where peak. it's going to end at. Yeah. Like, we believe it's going to probably go somewhere between 150 and 200, I think, is where we're going to end up at. Um, okay. How's financial services committee chair uh, call for stablecoin legislation after PayPal's pi pious announcement? I love calling it pious. Um, and look at, the, look at the ads we get since we looked at uh, Jasmine on here one time. <laughs> what the heck? Representative Patrick Mitting, Henry, chair of the U.S. Uh, House Financial Service Committee. Endorsed PayPal has recently announced stablecoin. Um, I like Patrick McHenry a lot. Patrick McHenry was not looped in with Mitch McConnell and um, what's his name, uh, McCarthy taking money for SBF. I, I wish Patrick McHenry would be um, in charge of the Republican Party. I love him a lot. I like Warren yeah. Davidson too. I like uh, Tom Emmer. I like those guys. I think they mean well for crypto. Um, but I like the way Patrick McHenry speaks. He wears a bow tie. Now, I usually don't like a guy with a bow tie. That's not true. I like a guy with a bow tie. I'll just never be the guy wearing the bow tie. Mm. Guy with the bow tie's got balls. Just saying. It's, it's quite a look. It's interesting. Yeah. I, when I worked at Hollywood Video when I was like in my teenage years, I wore a bow tie and suspenders. You know who wears a bow tie in this office? Who? He's been on the show wearing a bow tie. 
TJ? No. TJ's well, been on the show wearing a bow tie. No, he does. He does too. But there's one person. You got the second half of that name correct. Yeah, it's close. Oh, BJ wears a bow tie. No, for okay, sure. there. Okay, I guess we'd have a couple different J's in here. Oh. Nope, another one. AJ. AJ. Oh, he wears a bow tie on the price on the price prediction video. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Actually, good call. Good call. I can see BJ will wear anything ridiculous. That's true. B- I, did, yeah. I think BJ wore. Did he have a bow tie down in Miami when he dressed up for that event? <laughs> Who knows what he had? BJ's awesome. BJ's something. We love BJ. I did not like him the first day he came up here. I was like, <laughs> this guy's a jerk. And then B- I was like, oh, he means well. Okay, I like him. BJ, we love BJ. He BJ's definitely is a special guy. He's a, he take, he's you have to get used to him, and then he's awesome. Uh, they're saying my short is about to hit. Yeah, 20, 29. Let's see. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're at 29, 766 at the moment. It's about to hit. Okay. Yep. Y'all going to see it live. This is why we do the show longer now. So you can see the trade play out. Um, okay. McHenry said bipartisan act, uh, the bipartisan act recognizes state level regulation of crypto companies and builds on state regulatory um, issues. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with PayPal. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with PayPal either. Okay. So Patrick McHenry likes it. I Look, I want to say this. I, I believe that the PayPal coin is good for crypto, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's a good crypto. Mm-hmm. Do you guys understand what I'm saying here? Like, we need kind of these, these go-betweens. We need these gray or these middle grounds to kind of tie people into crypto and to get them interested, yeah. right? You know, what get, you know what would get somebody really interested in Bitcoin? PayPal freezes your, P, your, your, your PYUSD. It's true. If they freeze your money, yeah. you're going to be like, what the? F- this is what crypto is? You're going to do five minutes of research you do five minutes of research and you're going to be like, oh, wow, this is terrible. What? Oh, this is not like Bitcoin. So I think it's good. I Look, I think it's great they can vaporize your wallet. This is great because guess what? Nobody in crypto is going to be using it. It's only people not in crypto that are going to be using this stuff because we all know. So this is what it is. Um. Okay. And look, they have to have it where they can – look – PayPal has to have it where they can get a refund from you, I believe, right? Yeah. They have to be able to recall that, but that's if it's sitting in your wallet. If you move it, if you cash it out and move it to your bank account, they can try, but you can stop them from doing it. So I don't, I don't know. I guess, I, I guess I've never thought about that, but um, I do think though, I think this is good for crypto or excuse me. I think it, yeah, I think it's good for crypto. It, it's a, it's a bad crypto. It's a, it's a net benefit because Absolutely. of the exposure that'll come. But, I mean, to be fair, I, I think, you could make even the same argument for CBDCs being net benefits because they're going to bring people into the digital currency world. And like you said, they're going to get one taste of the evilness of CBDCs and be like, all right, let me do some more research here. Oh, uh, look, our trade hit. It hit. It got it. Got it. it got it. Yep. It got it. There we go. And now it's dropping. Yeah. Drop, drop, baby, drop. Sorry, guys, if you have money. Um, Let's see. No, it's peanut. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Well, cool. We'll see what happens with this. I think it's going to be pretty good. Oh, I need yeah. to go, let's go back there. Okay, cool. I, I, I'm just going to let it play out. I think we're going to hit the hit the hit the marks. Market sentiment sways as Tether sees largest redemption since FTX collapse amid Pi USD launch. Oh, this is interesting. Tether has recently experienced one of the largest redemptions since the collapse of FTX. And introducing, uh, and here it is. You can see this. This is the circulating supply, the one day change. Um, so you can see it fell dramatically and then went back up. Oh, no, that, that's not, this is the one-day change. It's not the 24-hour chart. Right. I was like, how is this a 24-hour chart? This doesn't make any sense. It's a one-day change. And you can see here, the dramatic fall right here. And then I guess this is in November. No? That was a big, that was a big drop, too. So, intriguing note, uh, the redemption rate, according to a guy that can't grow a mustache, has fallen below the 10 BP mark over the past 24 hours. Uh, this is the lowest rate since the FTX collapse uh, and may suggest a change in market behavior or sentiment towards a stable coin. And guys, if you hate PayPal, if you if, if PayPal or a bank has ever done anything to screw you, frozen an account, uh, took fees when they weren't supposed to, smash the like button for us. This is how we know you hate banks. Smash the like button for us, number one. Aunt Lynn said she was around for the entire story of the internet. Aunt Lynn's been around since 1950. That's extreme. 1950, ARPANET. Aunt Lynn, she'd been around. Mm. She, she said she worked for the Air Force. She was in the Air Force. Okay. ARPANET was a military. You know the internet started as a military 
Uh, do you know the history of the I, internet? I say, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't think Great I know the history video. of the internet that well. Yeah. Great video. Let's do a history of the internet. The yeah. DARPA? ARPA, ARPANET started in the 1950s. They didn't really know what they were doing with it. It was a military tool. The first transaction ever on the internet was, I believe, in the 1970s. A uh, Stanford, or no, a an MIT student sold weed to a Stanford student in the 70s as a first transaction ever on the internet. And then, of course... ARPANET ends up getting dropped by the military. They move on and use something else. And then a private company, I believe, takes over. And eventually, by 1991, David Berners-Lee creates a public internet. Then we have Netscape and America Online. Boom, we got an internet. That's how it all happened. So um, it, I mean, somebody, what, somebody's saying DARPA. It's ARPANET, I believe, isn't it? A-R-P-A. I believe it's ARPANET. Let us know in chat if you guys want to see that video, A History of the Internet, and then you actually have to go watch them. Because we're like Ben said in the beginning, we are making phenomenal videos. If you guys are yeah. going and watching these videos, we're making some good stuff. You guys got to go watch it. Go watch last night's video about banks. It is a, amazing. Yeah. But you got to watch it. And we also, we also have, um, we have this comment from Red Man. I thought Al Gore invented the Internet. And oh he did. Al Gore. Al Gore did invent the Internet. It was a time machine he actually mm. used. You create a time machine. Went back. He actually, he may have created in the 1700s. He's done a lot, Al Gore. Al Gore's done so much. He's, he's done so much for the world. Very busy guy. Very busy. Couldn't win the presidency. Mm -mm, that's a little couldn't, hard. Yeah. Couldn't win it. Hadn't figured out how Could, to wriggle it. Couldn't, I mean, uh, couldn't win the presidency coming out of one of the greatest financial presidents we've, we've had in terms of economy numbers. Hmm. Bill Clinton, really well. Al Gore still couldn't win. You know why? Because his attention was split. He was so focused. So focused so on, still on the internet. With, uh, with paper. At that time, we didn't have the yeah. electronic machines yet. Well, they say those those chads in the vote, the, the the hanging chads. Yeah, they were. They say it was caused by climate change. That's why he got so oh. into it. Yeah, so they say. Um, okay, uh, Des Brooks says PayPal closed my account because I sold e liquids and held twenty four thousand pounds for forty days. Exactly. That's what kind of trash. PayPal closed my account because I had crypto in it. I believe. Um, he invented global warming. It's I, true. Did he invent it or did he did he discover it and create all the solutions? It's a good question. Somebody I have to ask him. Has he created solutions? Al Gore, oh, for sure. Tons of them. You can tell because there was global warming and then the the climate was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, Al. Okay. Look, you want to be like that? Cool. No problems. Hey, I'm going to stop warming the planet. Now I'm just going to change the climate. Oh, that's true. what the environment yeah. said. Yeah, that said the Al Gore intimidated Mother Nature so much mm -hmm. they actually had to change. Yeah. They say if we have another ice age, it's just a reaction to Al Gore. Now, now Al Gore's all about climate change. Okay, cool, Al. Mm. But like, I don't know. Or is Mother Nature gonna come back with an ice age now? I don't know. Or maybe she'll just make the temperature the same all the time. What are you gonna do then if the temperature is the same all the time? These are important conversations. Man bear pig. <laughs> what is man bear pig? What is that? South I, Park. I, 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 there's South a, there's Park destroyed Al Gore. South Park. That, oh, oh, is that what, that where was, that came yeah, from? The Al Gore episode. South Park joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. That's pretty funny. Oh, somebody uh, finally said who Satoshi is. They finally said the name. Mm -hmm. I guess we've been talking <laughs> yeah. about him for five minutes now. <laughs> what is this noise? You breaking things? It's a rattle. It's it's this. <sighs> Get out of here. That's Propel. Fun. Probably. I propelled it forward, I tell you that. Yeah. Uh, all right, if you ever squeak around me, I'll propel you forward too. Circle CEO says just 30% of USDC adoption occurs in the US, but that's about accurate, right? I bet if you reverse it around the world, probably like way more people, you know, use uh, Tether around the world. So 70% um, comes from outside the United States. Well, 70% of overall stablecoin usage is probably, uh, probably in Tether. Um, or 70% of users probably use Tether. Now, the numbers might be different because a lot of the big institutions here use USDC. Jeremy Allaire said a whopping 70% of USDC adoption comes from outside the United States. Strong progress is happening all across Asia. LATAM. Uh, LATAM is a good place. I love LATAM. Mm -hmm. That sounds for Latin America, guys. Sorry. Uh, in Africa, and demand for safe, transparent digital dollars are strong. Um, Jeremy Allaire's son, heavily against CBDCs, which is so interesting. I'm starting to think there's something to that. I'm starting to think that USDC is not trying to be the CBDC. And they're at, they may actually be trying to prevent the CBDC because the government told them they were going to go with somebody else for the CBDC. Could be what happened. 
Could be. We'll see. Um, Will, Aunt Lynn, here she goes. Here comes Aunt Lynn again. We can debate about climate change, and one thing that no one can deny, the uh, plastic pollution in the oceans is very real and is 100% our responsibility. We do need to care about what we're doing. And w- what I would say about that, Lynn, is I, I don't know. Do you use a straw? You might be the number one person. Straws, they say 94% of plastic in the, in the ocean is straws. What? Huh? They say 94%. Who's, who's they? Who's well, the rest are drones. Who's saying The it? rest <laughs> of the trash in the ocean are actually drones. They've got, they've got like little, like things you think is like little Coke, the, the six packs of Coke yeah. or, or, or beer, the little plastic things. Yeah. Those are drones swimming around the ocean. Mm. Like the birds, half the birds are drones, they say. Mm. Look, guys, I, look, I, I wasn't saying anything bad about it. Look, I under, we definitely have affected the climate in some form or fashion. There's no question about that. But there are a lot of other factors here. And I, the whole climate change, what, once again, we talked this morning on the channel, we talked about, we talked about Planned Parenthood. We talked about cancer. We talked about how cancer has become a business and abortions have become a business. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem, right? Climate change has become a business. That's a problem. We don't have to argue about the merits of one side or the other to recognize that when something becomes a business, what does that mean? The people in that business are trying to do what? Make money. How do people make money? They sell you things. Right? They sell you things. When stand up cancer does these things at MLB baseball games where you're all supposed to write somebody you know who is affected on cancer, you hold it up. Why are they doing that? Do you, do you think they would be doing that at the stadium if it was not televised? Would they? So do they care? Or is it awareness and money to our organization? We talked about how decentralized science is going to stop all of that. And I'm not standard cancer. I actually know somebody who either used to work there or does work there. I'm not saying they're a bad organization, I'm just saying it's not necessary. We now through decentralized science, you'll be able to donate to stuff directly. You don't have to go through a nonprofit where the four, like the American Cancer Society, where the top, and I'm not saying they don't deserve this money. I'm saying the top four people combined in 2020 for American Cancer Society earned two and a half million dollars. Two and a half million dollars. I'm telling you, you give me two and a half million dollars, I'm going to cure cancer. If that's all I had to spend it on, I'm going to find a way to cure it, I think. Two and a half million dollars. Well, don't worry about it. Joe Biden already. Cured cancer. Oh, Joe Biden did cure cancer. No, I'm we already got that. Ended that well, Joe, here's a question. Here's a here's a question. Will Joe Biden become the new Al Gore? We're hey, down the road. People say Joe Biden invited he invented everything. Have that much time left. Yeah. Um. Oh, I, Ann Lynn, I'm totally kidding. I know there's a big plastic problem in the ocean. Yeah. I agree, 100. percent You're correct, 100. percent Plastic straws not the solution, or uh, paper straws not the solution. You know what the solution is? Metal straws. That's what we carry metal straws everywhere we go on vacation. I will not use a paper straw. It's disgusting. It cup. You can't drink a milkshake out of the cup. You can. No, they, they fill it to, trust me, I experienced this this weekend. None of the milk, I ordered two milkshakes from uh, this weekend on, on Uber Eats. They deliver them both in a cup with a lid that's this kind of lid where the ice cream, the whipped cream stacks up against the top of it and they don't give you a straw, they give you a spoon. You take the top off of that thing, it spills everywhere. Common sense, people. Um, ARPANET created the foundation of the internet in 1969. NSF took over from ARPANET in 1986, where the term internet was used. Um, Tim Lee, Netscape, was 1991. Internet research teacher. Well, cool. James, are you going to impress how much I knew? I know a good bit. We should do a video on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I have it down. We should do a video on the dark web, too. Okay. Yeah, I like those kinds of videos. You got to drink the milk sa- milkshake from the cup to get the stash. I got a real one. That's all I need. <laughs> I was cheating on the diet. Come, come on. Can y'all give me a break? Come on, Death Burger. Relax. Um, okay, so we know USDC is whatever, blah, 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 blah. USDT and USDC exchange supply may be foreshadowing a rally. Now, that always happens. Let's, do they have a chart? wonder if we can look at the... There's a better chart that shows this over time. Um, uh, well, obviously, what they're saying is Tether and USDC moving into exchanges is bullish, of course, obviously. Mm-hmm. Bitcoin moving into exchanges, Ethereum moving into exchanges, bearish. Mm-hmm. Stablecoins moving in, bullish. Stablecoins coming out, bearish. Bitcoin and Ethereum coming out, bullish. So just so you guys understand the way that works. Um, the exchange supplies of USDC and Tether are relatively low, according to data from the blockchain intelligence firm Sandiment. In a tweet yesterday, the firm revealed the exchange supply for USDT has risen slightly. Um, historically, increasing exchange supply for stablecoins foreshadowed price surges in the crypto markets, revealed Sandiment. 
gosh. <laughs> Dave Digital and Nick, they're He's getting into it again. I tell you what. Oh, no. So I said the onion router. I know what that is. Mm. Uh, although USDC is exchange supplies at a yearly low, USDC exchange supplies not changed much over the past month. Firm did highlight the USDT's exchange supplies recorded an increase. Overall, the trading volume in the crypto market just over 24 hours. Yada, yada, yada. TJ, are you coming over to take over? Wait, wait, show TJ. Show TJ. Oh, proof of life. There, there he is. There he is, guys. There's TJ. Did you hear my comment about you? Okay, well, I said, you know, we were talking about all the girls in the office, yeah. all the, uh, the, the, the girls that have been born in the office. Okay. Uh, you're, baby you're a daughter. Yeah. Uh, we also have, uh, Brian is getting ready to have a baby. Girl. Nick yeah. just had a new yeah. baby, new baby girl. Tim had a boy. Yeah. And Tim was saying that he, he might have the pick, the pick yeah. of the girls. Brody oh have, yeah. Brody have the girl. the, and I said, race. okay, out of all of the father-in-laws to have, <laughs> I'm going with Brian. <laughs> As a fun father-in-law. Yeah. I'm, well, I didn't say fun. I just mean, Brian's chill. Chill. Like, yeah. Brian's really chill. He's got like, that mountain man vibe. Yeah. yeah. If I'm trying to get married. To one of these ladies, I'm trying to ask Brian. Hey, hey, Brian, can I get permission to marry your daughter? <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, I'm in. Cool. Yeah. What yeah, you're yeah. saying, you think I'd be a tough one to get by? Maybe. You're, you could be a little. Now, certainly not to me. You're not intimidating. Right, right. But, okay. I, I have heard. Certainly, you do have an air of intimidation uh, because of the way that you communicate sometimes. I have heard Like, that. where you throw stuff at me. I don't <laughs> think I'm the one who throws stuff. <laughs> We did get that hole patched up, though, so yeah, nobody will good. ever know anymore. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so, TJ, thank you for coming on the show. Let's yeah, see if people yeah, yeah. love... People love... They think you're AI, they say. They say you're AI. TJ's alive. All right, somebody put him back in the cage. All right. Okay. Um, let's see here. Cardano records impressive 49% growth um, in DAP transactions, 10% rise in TVL. I think Cardano's going to continue to grow, but I do... I, I, I Look, Cardano's going to do well in this bull market. It's going to do well. I, I, I'm really wondering if, I'm really wondering if it's going to get overshadowed in the bull run by a lot of other projects. And I've always said that I believe it's the next cycle where Cardano really, really, really shines and has a chance to threaten or defeat uh, Ethereum in the, the layer one race. So we'll see what happens there. I, it, it's going to do well, yeah. obviously, right? It's going to, let's see, where's it at now? 20, uh, 29, 29, 30 cents. cents? It's probably going to go somewhere in the six to eight dollar range, I would think. Yeah, probably. maybe. Yep. Um, but I, I think that it's still there's a twenty x. That's great. But I don't think this is going to be the peak of Cardano. This is going to be a peak of a lot of other projects, I believe, in terms of their their ranking and, and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to do well. It's going to twenty x. I think it could go to maybe ten. I don't know. But it's not going to do as well as some of the other projects. I mean, it's getting very high in market cap, too. Um, but I just think when you look at all the pro the VC funds are very interesting to watch. <laughs> TJ's love NFT. I don't know. Very interesting to watch. All the big funds, it's all the RC20s. Mm. It's all the RC20s. These people. We looked at it on Blockchain Basement yesterday. So, did you think that was interesting? Were you on there last? You were down there, Drew? Yeah, he was on there. Yeah. What, the did seat. you think that was interesting? That it was all the RC20s? I mean, it's what we've been kind of seeing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like all these layer ones are just pining for their chance to be noticed, even at this point. Like, Ethereum has just absolutely dominated DeFi yeah. so far. So, you know, yeah. it, 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 there are high risk, high reward plays if they do get noticed for a short amount of time in the next bull market, which is something you can look at and yeah. but just know you're not married to it. Yeah. You know? So I think Cardano is going to do well overall. I think it's the best competitor to Ethereum. I just think it's a it's the slow process continues to move. Are you not Toronto? I am in Toronto next week. I am in Toronto. I'm in New York Thursday, Friday. I'm in Dubai over the weekend. I go to Toronto on Tuesday. I come back on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to figure out some ways for me to call in and stuff. I, we got to figure that out. You know what we need to do, Tim, by the way? Yeah. And Drew, hmm. what we need to do is before the show, we just need to check in. Like I need to do like an audio check, yeah. And we see how the it's really a video check, yep. Yeah. And if it's good. not good, what we need to do is we just need to have like a separate thing where I can call in, okay, and just call and have the audio and a picture of my voice, okay. I mean, a picture, picture of, of your voice. voice. Yeah, this voice. is very futuristic what we're doing. Okay. Picture of my voice. Okay. Picture of my face. There's not an option just to turn the camera off. Well, yeah, but that looks weird. We want to overlay. Okay. Why would we want just a black screen there? That looks bad. Yeah. Like, you put something in that box that's whatever. We might try that. Um, Can I choose the picture? What's that? Can I choose the picture that goes in the box? Ooh, that's dangerous. That's dicey. Yes. 
Yes. Hey, I, it's going to be great content. It's going to be good stuff. Just uh, my one request is just not from when I was overweight. I don't no, want no, no. I don't I, mean, I don't want an overweight photo. That's I've, my only request. But it might be um I, it'd be embarrassing. Photo. I don't care what it yeah, is. Yeah, okay, good. Just and definitely not that meme they make of me. Definitely not that one. That would get us censored. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, all right, there we go. Uh, so I like that. Okay, Elon Musk here. Um, Elon Musk backed brain hacking firm Neuralink raises $280 million. Um, the biotechnology company announced the raise, um, uh, $280 million in Series D funding led by Peter Thiel's founder fund. Do people like Peter Thiel? You know, Peter Thiel destroyed Gawker, which was where the uh, uh on behalf of Hulk Hogan, Peter Thiel sued Gawker mm. on behalf of Hulk Hogan and got the website shut down. And that was that was where the um, Silk Road was originally outed was through Gawker. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that did the big article on it. Um, let's see, co-founded in 2016. So there you go. I mean, they raised a bunch of money. They're trying to do more AI stuff. Big shocker. Room temperature superconductor race shines light on crypto's DeSide movement. You want to find more about DeSide? Go watch the show this morning at 8:30 um, a.m. Great show today where we talked a lot about. Uh, decentralized science. I'm not going to go too much into this. This story just came out. The race to replicate LK99, a superconductor capable of transmitting energy without resistance at room temperature, has kicked off in the do-it-yourself science community. Man, what? You know the only better community than do-it-yourself science? Do-it-yourself surgery. Love that. Love that community. Do your do-it-yourself surgery. Mm. I'm, I'm into it. I've done toe surgery on myself several times. I've done some dental work. I've done some work. Have you seen the video of that guy on the boat that like he literally was going to die or like he had like they were jumping off in the back? You know he's he was in the middle of the ocean by himself. Yeah, and something was going wrong. I think it was his appendix burst, <gasps> and it's like if he he wouldn't have time to make it back, so they walked him through removing his. Appendix. Oh my gosh! Yeah, Eddie Organ says Ben, my sister Jean and I can listen to you all day. We love your passion, enjoy your dedication, love for what you're doing, blockchain tech and crypto. Need you. Hope to meet you someday. Well, Eddie, I hope I hope to meet uh, you and Jean. That sounds really nice. Hmm. Go to a fan's house with full what? Huh? What is that word? That's a typo. Yeah, I know it's a typo, but what does that mean? L I want to visit a fan's house. That would be cool. We just show up at somebody's house one day and do the show. <laughs> with the gear and everything. Yeah, All right, yeah, come yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. All right, see if they'd like that. I know they would love that. Mm. I know they would love that. Yeah. Show up at your house. Basically, what would be is your wife would call in and be like, I want to nominate my person. I know he'll be there on this day. Your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, whatever you got. Aunt, cousin, uncle, uh, you know, uh, ungendered person, whatever it is. And bonus, they'd get to meet BJ. They would get to meet BJ. It is true. Big Boy House Show. Big Boy House Show. Yeah, would y'all like that? I love, they would, they would love that. People would die. Like, really big fans, like, they would die if I showed up at their house to do the show. Um... What did that say about the Kathy Wood thing? Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that comment. It's the next comment under. There's a five day countdown until something's going to be announced. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. All right. Uh, she she said so. Th this Friday they're supposed to give her an answer, but they had the option to punt till January. She even says she thinks they're going to punt. They're uh, they're going to push that down. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on here. Hold on here, guys. <sighs> Let me do some math here. How many ETFs applications are there right now? Do we know nine? <sighs> 11, That's 13. That, between that and ETF, uh, that and Ethereum is like 12, I believe. Okay, 12. There's about three or four that are defunct, I believe, that did, got shut down and did not renew. Okay. okay. Each one of these, I believe, is built in with a minimum of four, maybe six deadlines. Literally, since the start of the first ETF application for the Winklevoss twins, they were the first ones to file one. Did you know that? Mm-mm. I believe the Winklevoss twins were the first one to file an ETF. I think they did it back in 2014. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's like, do you remember Goldberg? Do you ever watch wrestling? Love Goldberg. I, yeah, I remember Goldberg. Love Goldberg. Yeah. Goldberg was my favorite wrestler ever. Now, a lot of your wrestling purists will say he wasn't very good technically and they don't like him. Okay. What I'll tell you is, I love Goldberg. I, he, he was a beast. He was a monster. He played at Georgia too. He was a monster. Mm. Okay. This guy's record, he just never lost. He had to like 155 and 0 before he finally lost. And I tell you what, that Kevin Nash or that Taser, I tell you what, that's what it was, I think. The point is, the ETF, the SEC is more undefeated against ETF deadlines than Goldberg was. Literally every single one for nine years now has been put off yep. and every deadline has been pushed. So for Kathy Wood to come out and say, 
yeah, they're probably going to push back the deadline. No duh, Kathy. No duh. Like, I like Kathy. I think she's a good person. But like, no duh. Like, yes, it's obviously getting pushed back. There's virtually no chance it gets approved on Friday, whatever day it is. No Friday, yeah. Virtually no chance. Or maybe it's Monday. Maybe it's Monday. Yeah. Um, okay, pick a coin. Um, mantle, arbitrum, optimism. They you guys, it. what's that? They picked it. They picked it. I, okay, they, picked, they picked optimism. I want to pick mantle. You want to pick Mantle? I voted for me. I tried. I, Mantle I is like, Mantle's the on one Mantle. right now, guys. I, I I believe we looked at it yesterday. I really like this project. I really like this project. If you want to see my pick for D side that I really like, check it out this morning. Hmm. Guys, make sure you're watching the show. We got to get that show up. The numbers up, guys. Or I'll stop doing it. That's a lie. I'm not going to stop doing it. But <laughs> I do it for me. I don't even do it for you. But I like it when the numbers are up too. Um, they're picking optimism. I think. I mean, the issue is Mantle's market cap's already so freaking high so quick. Um, I would definitely take Optimism against Arbitrum. Um, I just think there's more money. There's more usage on Arbitrum. Look, I can make an argument. It, for these three coins right here, for Mantle, Arbitrum, and Optimism, I can make an argument for every one of them. And I can't usually do that with the picks. Mm. There's usually one to me that's clearly above. I think this is going to be a fascinating race between all three of these. So Interesting. the crowd picked Optimism. It's it's the it's the leader in the house right now, not in ranking wise, but in popularity and kind of sentiment. It's the leader. Um, it's a it, I think it's got the best chance to get up there with Polygon, um, but we'll see. We'll we'll see what uh, what happens here. So, all right. Um, moving on here. Hold, hold on, I'm getting some some interference here. Something weird's happening. Can't quite tell. It's on your own. Give it to oh, you. I oh, I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Did he just give it to us? He just gave it to us. He gave it to us. Yeah. And I, do you know who brings X to us? Who is that? That would be Steak. That would be Steak. Steak brings, steak brings X to us every every single day. Oh, we love Steak. Good. We love them. They're great people. We absolutely love them. Um, number one sponsor of our channel. If you guys want to play on Steak, check out bitboycrypto.com slash Steak. There you go. Mm. We love you guys. They're great. Um, uh, the audience, we don't care about y'all. That's why we talk about Steak all the time. But we love Steak. <laughs> we love Steak. Um, okay. All right. Last one. This is your XRP section. Here is a new partnership, and I believe we're going to start seeing more and more of these XRP partnerships. Uh, if you're in the XRP army, roll the X up. Mm. Did you like that jump? Mm. Party up in here. Let's go. Ripple joins ISDA. Hey, I think Ripple is the one. Mm. I Good think one. Ripple is the one. I think they are. And there's 1.2 quadrillion derivatives market. Okay. If one point, if the market cap, who's better at math, Drew or Tim? Probably Drew. Oh, Drew, God. if the market cap of XRP was $1.2 quadrillion, what would the price to be? Oh, Look gosh. that up. Right. Hey, that's great clickbait for this segment later. Quadrillion. It goes on the show. No. Can you even put, do you guys know if you turn your calculator and you put unlimited numbers in? Did on you know phone? that? Yeah, if you turn it, if you turn it horizontal as opposed to your, your phone. Okay. Of the calculator app. If you turn it this way, you can put a lot more numbers in. It doesn't show the weird ease and the, the scientific I notations or whatever that. it's called. I didn't either. Somebody told me that and it was amazing. What a heck. All right. Okay, here we go. Uh, in a stunning move, Ripple's analysis membership with the International Swaps and Derivatives Association entering the massive 1.2 quadrillion derivatives market. Um, let's see here. The ISDA is a prestige. <laughs> this is the prestigious association with more than 1,000 institutional members across 79 countries. Driving force in global derivatives market, setting standards and promoting sound risk management. They're, why would you promote sound risk management? How, would you, how do you make money? Uh, financial experts are closely monitoring this development as it may have broader implications for the crypto markets. Real association with these institutions could lead to further integration of crypto into traditional finance. So there you go. There's your XRP story. Guys, we're not doing Q&A at the end of the show anymore right now. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Like, we also have a scenario where we can run through the show quicker and then just chat for 30 minutes. Like, I don't know what, what to do with this show anymore. This market cap would be gosh insane you for said, XRP. What the, the quadru- what would the price be? You said be one quadrillion, right? It would be $22.8 thousand dollars. How much? $22,800 per coin. Okay, guys. This is official. Goodness uh, $22,800 XRP. Breaking wow. news. This is breaking news. Breaking news. $22,800 XRP. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. XRP Army, throw it up. How do you, throw how do you feel it about up, that? guys. Oh, Man, I tell you what. I can't wait for somebody to trash me online and say, BitBoy said XRP is going to $22,800. I didn't say it. I think Drew said it. That's all me. <laughs> <laughs> Come and find me. G-O-L says, hey, Bill, when you're in New York, I have a small business luxury car service accepting crypto 
except in crypto. Wow, well, that's amazing. A little bit too soon, a little bit too quick for this trip, I think. Um, but uh, but yeah, see, seventy seven people, seventy seven percent of people want me to come to their house. That's yeah, five eighty nine guys. Five eighty well, guys. Five eighty nine is just a, a step in the way. <laughs> there are twenty two thousand eight hundred. A fart in the wind compared to what it's a fart in of. the wind. Wow, it's yeah. my favorite place to do it. Um, and let's let's just look at the trade real quick before we go. See where where it's at right now, guys. We are deep in the red. We are deep in the red right now. Mm. We are a return on this trade right now is sitting at negative. Well, let's go. Let's go. We're now positive. Amazing. Say, amazing. What an amazing is... trade. What an amazing trade. We are up 6%. Oh, up 4. We're amazing with these trades, guys. <laughs> amazing. Can't wait to. I think this trade is going to do really well, though, to be honest. It's going to do oh, yeah, really well. Yeah. Everything right now is flashing on those lower time frames, yeah. four hour, one hour. Over overbought at the moment. Per, so. What just real? I know we're overtime today. We are overtime. We are today. definitely overtime. Yeah. I know, but you know what? I just love this show. I just love my people. This is great. Yeah, just love my people. I it's say two fifteen. Two fifteen. Yeah. And well, I got to probably leave by two o five because I have mm. a dentist appointment at two thirty. Hey. Okay. Sorry, not to get cheeky with it, but mm. okay. Um, let's look here. This is the four hour. Yeah, let's go to the one hour. See what's going on with the one hour here. Guys, this train stuff's really easy when you just be patient. Okay, so we come what where where are we seeing red dots here? I mean everything everything on market side or on the also outside of the three minute chart is showing it's still, you know, nothing super bullish, but not super bearish. Three minute chart looking pretty bearish. Oops. Don't want that. Do not want that. Huh? Stop. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Oh, yeah, I was trying to expand this here. So we do have a red dot on this. Man, I tell you what, it went right up to that line, didn't it? Basically went yeah. right up to that line and went down. Man, right in that range. I tell you what. Is Kelly drawing lines again? Because I thought I only drew one line. No, I drew two. I should have drawn two. That is correct. <sighs> you can tell because they're not white dots. Mm. Five-minute chart, still not looking super bearish. So, uh, so you're looking at the RSI? I'm looking at RSI. I, I, I use okay. chart prime oscillators. I, they're, they flash over bot. They have red reversals. Like, yeah. You're right. Like every From four hour down, everything is looking over bot, which is a sign. Again, that's not a 100% that it's going to go down, but it's yeah. overwhelmingly saying it should go down. Should. It should. Well, um, speaking of uh, 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 overwhelmingly going down, Tim, we appreciate you being on the show. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you being on the show today. Yeah. You're not going to take over my show. I'm going to have to say this audibly every day. Drew, thank you for coming on the show today. Absolutely. Kelly, thank you for coming on the show today. Audience, thank you for coming on the show. That's right, Red Man. I do have my Brazilian wax point. Which, by the way, guys, I have a big announcement real quick before we go. Big oh. announcement. I'm changing laser hair removal companies. Oh. I feel like this place has just been scamming me. Where are you taking your talents to now? Uh, I don't have... I'm a free agent right now. Yeah. If you are interested in removing my body mm. hair from the waist up only, oh, people... Gosh. Only from the waist up, guys. Okay. Only from the waist up. Don't get excited. Good clarification. Good clarification. Yeah. Waist up only. If you thought this was your in, yeah. it's not. It's not. Uh, waist up, but and not the not the lower arms. Top of the arms, I I, I do. Um, we're trying to get it removed. So we're looking for a new place. So if you got a laser, call me. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good way up. Why is my water getting 